even in such an extreme circumstance, animal cruelty is not justified. Oh. Welcome, welcome <laughs> all. Oh, I've just been told by our, theater. I've just been told by our off-screen oracle, Babs the Bat, that you have heard none of the introduction that you may have been watching. So from the top, ladies and gentlemen. Seekers of the stage. Denizens of the dramatic. Refugees from reality. Creatures of all heights, hues, and humors. Welcome to What Streams May Come, presented by Chaotic Tiefling Productions. Tonight, I am joined by the magically macabre and majestically mystifying Lady of Shadows, Jessica Skellington. And I'm excited to join alongside the boisterous Bacchanalian Baron of Banter, Finnegan Archer, the Bloodhaven Bard. Every two weeks, we will be bringing you a dramatic work from the bard of all bards, William Shakespeare, performed by thespians driven out of the stage light by the perils of our present pandemic, leaving us without a place to perform our craft. As we have done in our private readings with our local friends, Finn and I have chosen one of Shakespeare's plays and made it open to all performers. What is unique about these readings is, aside from choosing the show, the casting is completely random. Through the magic of spreadsheet randomizers, every actor has an equal chance of being paired with any role, regardless of age, gender, etc. As you will see, this often makes for hilarious interpretations of the characters or provides a new spin on what you may have seen done in live theater. Tonight's performance will be one of Jess's all-time favorites, Twelfth Night. To bring you this story, we welcome to the stream a talented troupe of troubadours. Players, as I call out tonight's cast of characters, please introduce yourself and say hello to the lovely audience. Tonight, playing Sir Toby Belch, we have... Lindsay Zanna. Hi. Tonight, playing Viola, we have... Ian, hello. Playing Olivia. Thank you, sorry, that's me, hello, I'm Ellie. Playing Feste the Fool, we are joined by... Jenna K. that's me. Playing Sir Andrew, we have... My dear goblin, you are muted, and the lovely people only saw your mouth move. <laughs> Stupid Mike muted my computer, too. Hello, Goblin Katie playing Sir Andrew. <laughs> Love it. Tonight, Malvolio will be interpreted by... Hi, everybody. It's Sir Majesty. <laughs> Mariah will be played by... Hello, I'm John. The part of Orsino will be interpreted by... Traveler Farlander. Good evening. Tonight's Fabian is... Saluton. I am Jeffrey N. Baker. Tonight, the role of Sebastian will be filled by... Cheryl. Hi. The player in charge of our Antonio is... Melodic Blue. Hi. Triple cast as the captain, servant, and priest we have... Hi, I'm Terry. Double cast as Curio and our first officer we are joined by... Nate. And also double cast as Valentine and the second officer we have on the stream tonight. Hey guys, it's Ruth. But of course, the best part of our show is you. Please let us know how you're liking it in the chat and share some of those comments that you would normally get shushed for in live theater. Our performers may even join in in the dialogue along with Finn and myself. We humbly ask that you keep it respectful, but please feel free to make jokes, talk about the characters or plot, compliment our actors, and maybe be a bit bawdy. I mean, this is Billy Shakes we're talking about. And I think we'd be doing him a disservice if we shied away from any of the puns, quips, or innuendos that popped into our little minds. However, we do have moder moderators in the chat, so please be kind to one another and respectful of our actors. It is 
appropriate to mock any character in this show. But please, be nice and do not mock our lovely actors as they give it all they've got for you this evening. And with that said, we invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Without further ado, let us to places. Act one, scene one, for Twelfth Night. If music be the food of love, play on. Give me excess of it, that surfeiting the appetite may sicken and so die. That strain again, it had a dying fall. It came over my ear like a sweet sound that breathes upon a bank of violets, stealing and giving odor. Ugh, enough, no more. It is not so sweet now as it was before. O oh, spirit of love, how quick and fresh art thou, that notwithstanding thy capacity receiveth as the sea, not enters there of what validity and pitch soe'er, but falls into abatement and low price even in a minute, so full of shapes is fancy that it alone is high fantastical. Will you, will you go hunt, my lord? What, Curio? The heart. Why, so I do, the noblest that I have. Oh, when my eyes did see Olivia first, methought she purged the air of pestilence. That instant was I turned into a heart, and my desires like fell in cruel hounds, ere since pursue me. How now? What news from her? So please, my lord, I might not be admitted, but from her handmaiden do return with this answer. The element itself, till seven years' heat, shall not behold her face at ample view. But like a cloisteress, she will veiled walk, and water once a day her chamber round with eye-offending brine. All this to season a brother's dead love, which she would keep fresh and lasting in her sad remembrance. Oh, that she hath the heart of that fine frame to pay this debt of love but to a brother. How will she love when the rich golden shaft, that shaft hath killed the flock of all affections else that live in her, when liver, brain, and heart, these sovereign thrones are all supplied and filled her sweet perfections with one self king. Away before me to beds of sweet beds of flowers. Love thoughts lie rich when canopied with bowers. And so we move to act one, scene two. What country, friends, is this? It is Illyria, lady. And what should I do in Illyria? My brother, he is in Elysium. Perchance he is not drowned. What think you, sailors? It is perchance that you yourself were saved. Oh, my poor brother, and so perchance may he be. True, madam, and to comfort you with chance, assure yourself, after our ship did split, when you and those poor numbers saved with you hung on our driving boat, I saw your brother most provident in peril, bind himself, courage and hope, both teaching him the practice to a strong mast that drive upon the, on, upon the sea. Where, like Arion on the dive, dolphin's back, I saw him hold acquaintance with the waves so long as I could see. For saying so, there's gold. Mine own escape unfoldeth to my hope, whereto thy speech serves for authority the like of him. Knowest thou this country? Aye, madam, well, for I was bred and born not three hours' travel from this very place. Who governs here? A noble duke in nature, as in name. Uh, what is his name? Orsino. Orsino. I have heard my father name him. Uh, he was a bachelor then. And is so now, or was so very late, but for a month ago I went from hence, and then was fresh in murmur. As you know, what the great ones do, the less will prattle of. But he did seek the love of fair Olivia. What's she? A virtuous maid, the daughter of a count that died some twelve months since, then leaving her in the protection of his son, her brother, who shortly also died, for whose dear love they say she hath abjured the company in sight of men. Oh, that I served that lady and might not be delivered to the world till I had made mine own occasion mellow 
uh, what my estate is. That were hard to compass, because she will admit no kind of suit. No, not the Duke's. There is a fair behavior in thee, Captain. And though the nature with a beauteous wall doth oft close in pollution, yet of thee I will believe thou hast a mind that suits with this thy favor and outward character. I prithee, and I'll pay thee bounteously, uh, conceal me what I am, and, and be my aid, for such disguise as haply shall become the form of my intent. Uh, I'll serve this, Duke. Uh, thou shalt present me as a eunuch to him. It may be worth thy pains, for I can sing and, and speak to him in many sorts of music that will allow me very worth his service. Uh, what else may hap to time I will commit? Only shape thou thy silence to my wit. Be you his eunuch, and your mute I'll be. When my tongue blabs, then let my eyes not see. I thank thee. Uh, lead me on. Act one, scene three. What a plague means my niece to take the death of her brother thus. I am sure cares an enemy to life. By my troth, Sir Toby, you must come in earlier at nights. Your cousin, my lady, takes great exceptions to your ill hours. Why, let her accept before accepted. Aye, but you must confine yourself within the modest limits of order. Confine? I'll confine myself no finer than I am. These clothes are good enough to drink in, and so be these boots too. And be they not, let them hang themselves in their own straps. That quaffing and drinking will undo you. I heard my lady talk of it yesterday, and of a foolish knight that you brought in one night here to be her wooer. Who, Sir, Sir Andrew Augacheek? Aye, he. He's as tall as any man as, in, as any is in Illyria. What's that to the purpose? <laughs> Why, he has 3,000 ducats a year. Aye, but he'll have but a year in all these ducats. He's a very fool and a prodigal. Fie that you'll say so. He plays the vile de Gamboys and speaks three or four languages, word for word, without the book, and hath all the good gifts of nature. He hath indeed almost natural, for besides that he's a fool, he's a great quarreler, and but that he hath the gift of a coward to allay the gust he hath in quarreling. Tis thought among the prudent that he would quickly have the gift of, the, of a grave. By this hand, they are scoundrels and substractors that say so of him. Who are they? They that add, moreover, he's drunk nightly in your company. With drinking health to my niece. I'll drink to her as long as there is passage in my throat and drink in Illyria. He's a coward and a coistrel that will not drink to my niece till his brains turn at the toe like a parish top. What wench! Castellano Vogo, for here comes Sir Andrew Augaface. Sir Toby Belch! How now, Sir Toby Belch? Sir Andrew! Bless you, fair shrew. And you too, sir. A cost, Sir Andrew, a cost. What's that? My niece's chambermaid. Good mistress, a cost. I desire better acquaintance. My name is Mary, sir. Good mistress Mary, a cost. You mistake, knight. A cost is front her, board her, woo her, assail her. By my troth, I would not undertake her in this company. What is the meaning? Is that the meaning of a cost? Fare you well, gentlemen. And thou let part so, Sir Andrew. Wouldst thou mightest never draw sword again? And you part so, mistress? I would not, I would might never draw sword again. Fair lady, do you think you have fools in hand? Sir, I have not you by the hand. Mary, but you shall have, and here's my hand. Now, sir, thought is free. I pray ye, bring your hand to the buttery bar and let it drink. Wherefore, sweetheart, what's your metaphor? It's dry, sir. Why, I think so. But I am not such an ass, but I can keep my hands dry. But what's your jest? 
A dry jest, sir. Are you full of them? Aye, sir. I have them at my finger's ends. Mary, now that I let go your hand, I am barren. Oh, knight, thou lackest a cup of canary. When did I see thee so put down? Never in your life, I think, unless you see canary put me down. <laughs> Methinks sometimes I have no more wit than a Christian or an ordinary man has. But I am a greater eater of beef, and I believe that does harm to my wit. No question. And I thought of that, I'd forswear it. I'd ride home tomorrow, Sir Toby. Pourquoi, my dear knight? What is pourquoi? Do or not do? I would have had bestowed in that time the tongues that I have in fencing, dancing, and bear baiting. No, but I had followed the arts. Then hadst thou had an excellent head of hair. Why? Would, thou have me would that have mended my hair? Past question. For thou seest it will not curl thy nature. But it becomes me well enough, does it not? Excellent. It hangs like flax on a distaff. And I hope to see a housewife take thee between her legs and spit it off. Ah, ah, faith. I'll home tomorrow, Sir Toby. Your niece will not be seen. Or if she be, it's four to one, shall none of me. The Count himself here hard by woos her. She'll none of the count. She'll not match above her degree, neither in estate, years, nor wit. I have heard her swear it. Tut, there's life in it, man. I'll stay a month longer. <laughs> I am a fellow of the strangest mind in the world. I delight in masks and revels, sometimes all together. Art thou good at these kickshaws as night? As any man in Illyria, whatsoever he be under the degree of my betters. <laughs> and yet I will not compare with an old man. What is thy excellent in a galliard, knight? Faith, I can cut a caper. And I can cut the mutton to it. And I think I'll have the back trick simply as strong as any man in Illyria. <laughs> Wherefore are these things hid? Wherefore have these gifts a curtain before them? Are they like to take dust, like Mistress Maul's picture? Why dost thou not go to church in a galliard and come home in a coranto? My very walk should be a jig. I would not so much as make water but in a syncopace. What dost thou mean? Is it a world to hide virtues in? I did think, by the excellent constitution of thy leg, it was formed under the star of a galliard. Aye, tis strong and does indifferent well in a dun-colored stock. Hmm. Shall we set about some revels? What shall we do else? Were we not born under Taurus? <laughs> Taurus! Ah, that's sides and heart. No, sir, it is legs and thighs. Let me see them caper. <laughs> Higher! Oh, excellent! Okay. All I am right. living for this. <laughs> Act one, scene four. If the Duke continue these favors towards you, Cicero, Cicero you are to like to be much advanced. He hath known you but three days, and you are already no stranger. You either fear his humor or my negligence that you call in question the con continuance of his love. Is, is he inconstant or, sir, in his favors? No, believe me. Uh, I thank you. Uh, here comes the Count. Mr. Cesario, ho. Oh, on your attendance, my lord, here. Stand you a while aloof. Cesario, thou knowst no less but all. I have unclasped to thee the book even of my, my secret soul. Therefore, good youth, address thy gate unto her. Be not denied access. Stand at her doors and tell them there thy fixed foot shall grow till thou hast audience. Sure, my noble lord, if she be so abandoned to her sorrow as it is spoke, she never will admit me. Be clamorous and leap all civil bounds rather than make unprofited return. Say, I do speak with her, my lord. What then? Oh, then unfold the passion of my love. 
surprise her with discourse of my dear faith. It shall become thee well to act my woes. She will attend it better in thy youth than in a nuncio's of more grave aspect. I think not so, my lord. <laughs> dear lad, believe it. For they shall yet belie thy happy years that say thou art a man. Diana's lip is not more smooth and rubious. Thy small pipe is as the maiden's organ, shrill and sound, and all assimilative of woman's part. I know thy constellation is right apt for this affair. Some four or five attend to him, all if you will, for I myself am best when least in company. Prosper well in this, and thou shalt live as freely as thy lord, to call his fortunes thine. I'll do my best to woo your lady, yet a barful strife, or I who woo myself would be his wife. And shall we on to act one, scene five? Nay, either tell me where thou hast been, or I will not open my lips so wide as a bristle may enter in a way of thy excuse. My lady will hang thee for thy absence. Let her hang me. He that is well hanged in this world needs fear no colors. Make that good. He shall see none to fear. A good Linton answer. I can tell thee where that saying was born of I fear no colors. Where, good Mistress Mary? In the wars. And that may be you, uh, and that may you be bold to say in your foolery. Will God give them wisdom that have it, and those that are fools, let them use their talents. Yet you will be hanged for being so long absent, or to be turned away, is that not as good as a hanging to you? Many a good hanging prevents a bad marriage, and for turning away, let summer bear it out. You are resolute then. Not so, neither, but I am resolved on two points. That if one break, the other will hold, or if both break, your Gaskins fall. Apt, in good faith, very apt, will go thy way. If Sir Toby would leave drinking, thou wert as witty a piece of Eve's flesh as any in Illyria. Peace, you rogue, no more of that. Here comes my lady, makes your excuse wisely, you were best. Wit and be thy will put me into good fooling. Those wits that think they have thee do very oft prove fools. And I, that am sure I lack thee, may pass for a wise man. For what says Quinapolis, better a witty fool than a foolish wit. You have one more, Fifth Day. <laughs> Sorry. God bless thee, lady. Take the fool away. Do you not hear, fellows? Take the lady away. Go to, you're a dry fool. I'll know more of you. Besides, you grow dishonest. Two faults, Madonna, that drink and good counsel will amend. Forgive the dry fool, drink. Then is the fool not dry. Bid the dishonest man mend himself. If he mend, he is no longer dishonest. If he cannot, let the botcher mend him. Anything that's mended is but patched. Virtue that transgresses is but patched with sin. And sin that amends is but patched with virtue. If that this simple syllogism will serve so, if it will not, what remedy? As there is no true cuckold but calamity, so beauty's a flower. The lady bade take away the fool, therefore I say again, take her away. Sir, I bade them take away you. Miss Prison, in the highest degree, Lady Cacolus non facit macum, that, uh, that's as much to say as I wear not motley in my brain. Good Madonna, give me leave to prove you a fool. Can you do it? Dexterously, good Madonna. Don't Make your proof. I must catch eyes to you for it, Madonna. Good my mouse of virtue, answer me. Well, sir, for want of other idleness, I'll bide your proof. Good Madonna, why mournest thou? Could fool for my brother's death. I think his soul is in hell, Madonna. I know his soul is in heaven, fool. <laughs> the more fool, Madonna, to mourn your brother's soul being in heaven. Take away the fool, gentlemen. 
What think you of this fool, Malvolio? Doth he not mend? Yes, and shall do till the pangs of death shake him. Infirmity <clears throat> that decays the wise doth ever make the better fool. God send you, sir, a speedy infirmity, for the better increasing your folly. Sir Toby will be sworn that I am no fox, but he will not pass his word for two pence that you are no fool. How say you to that, Malvolio? I marvel your ladyship takes delight in such a barren rascal. I saw him put down the other day with an ordinary fool that has no more brain than a stone. Look you now, he's out of his guard already. Unless you laugh and minister occasion to him, he is gagged. I protest, I take these wise men that crow so at these set kind of fools, no better than the fool's zanies. Oh, you are sick of self-love, Malvolio, and taste with a distempered appetite. To be generous, guiltless, and a free disposition is to take those things for bird bolts that you deem cannon bullets. There is no slander in a loud fool, though he do nothing but rail, nor no railing as a known discreet man, though he do nothing but reprove. Now, Mercury, endue thee with leasing, for thou speakest well of fools. Madam, there is at the gate a young gentleman much desires to speak with you. From the Count Orsino, is it? I know not, madam. Tis a fair young man and well attended. Who of my people hold him in delay? Sir Toby, madam, your kinsman. Fetch him off, I pray you. He speaks nothing but madmen. Fie on him. Go you, Mavolio. If it be a suit from the Count, I am sick or not at home. What you will to dismiss it. Now, you see, sir, how your fooling grows old and people dislike it. Thou hast spoke for us, Madonna, as if thy eldest son should be a fool, whose skull drove cram with brains, for here he comes, one of thy kin, it has a most weak pea mater. By mine honor, half drunk. What is he at the gate, cousin? A gentleman. A gentleman? What gentleman? Tis a gentleman here. Plague of these pickle herring. How now, sot? <clears throat> Good Sir Toby! Cousin, cousin, how have you come so early by this lethargy? Lechery? <laughs> I defy lechery. Oh, uh, there's one at the gate. I, Mary, what is he? Let him be the devil, and he will. I care not. Give me faith, say I. Well, it's all one. What's a drunken man like, fool? Like a drowned man, a fool, and a madman. One draught above heat makes him a fool, the second mads him, and a third drowns him. Go thou and seek the crowner, let him sit on my cuz, for he's in his third degree of drink, he's drowned. Go look after him. <laughs> he is but mad yet, Madonna, and the fool shall look to the madman. <clears throat> Madam. Yon young fellow swears he will speak with you. I told him you were sick. He takes on him to understand so much, and therefore he comes to speak with you. I told him you were asleep. He seems to have a foreknowledge of that too, and therefore comes to speak with you. What is to be said to him, lady? He's fortified against any denial. Tell him he shall not speak with me. He's been told so. And he says he'll stand at your door like a sheriff's post and be the supporter to a bench. But he'll speak with you. What kind of man is he? Why, of mankind. What manner of man? Oh, very ill manner. He'll speak with you. Will you or no? Of what personage in years is he? Oh, not yet old enough for a man. Not young enough for a boy. As a squash is before tis a peace god, or a codling tis when tis almost an apple. Tis with him in standing water between boy and man. He's very well favored. And he speaks very shrewishly. One would think his mother's milk were scarce out of him. Let him approach. Call in my gentlewoman. Mm. Gentlewoman, my lady calls. 
Give me my veil. Come, throw it over my face. We'll once more hear Orsino's embassy. The honorable lady of the house, uh, which is she? Speak to me. I shall answer for her. Your will? Most radiant, exquisite, and unmatchable beauty, I pray you, tell me if this be the lady of the house, for I never saw her. I would be loath to cast away my speech, for besides, that is excellently well pinned. I have taken great pains to con it. Good beauties, let me sustain no scorn. I am very comfortable, even to the least sinister usage. Whence came you, sir? I can say little more than I have studied, and that questions out of my part. Good gentlewoman, give me modest assurance, if you be the lady of the house, that I may proceed in my speech. Are you a comedian? No, my profound heart, and yet, by the very fangs of malice, I swear, I am not that I play. Are you the lady of the house? If I do not usurp myself, I am. Most certain. If you are she, you do usurp yourself. For what is yours to bestow is not yours to reserve. But this is from my commission. I will on with my speech and your praise, and then show you the heart of my message. Come to what is important in it. I forgive you the praise. Alas, I took great pains to study it, and tis poetical. It is the more like to be feigned. I pray you keep it in. I heard you were saucy at my gates and allowed your approach rather than to wonder at you than to hear you. If you be not mad, be gone. If you have reason, be brief. Tis not the time of moon with me to make one in so skipping a dialogue. Will you holy sail, sir? Here lies your way. No, good swatter. I, I am to haul here a little longer. Some mollification for your giant sweet lady. Tell me your mind. I am a messenger. Sure, you have some hideous matter to deliver when the courtesy of it is so fearful. Speak your office. It alone concerns your ears. I bring no overture of war, no taxation of homage. I hold the olive in my hand. My words are as full of peace as matter. Yet you began rudely. What are you? What would you? The rudeness that hath appeared in me have I learned from my entertainment. What I am and what I would are as secret as maidenhead. To your ears, divinity. To any others, profanation. Give us the place alone. We will hear this divinity. Now, sir, what is your text? Most sweet lady. A comfortable doctrine. Much may be said of it. Where lies your text? In Orsuna's bosom. In his bosom? In what chapter of his bosom? To answer by, that, by the method in the first of his heart. Oh, I have read it. It is heresy. Have you no more to say? Good madam, let me see your face. Have you any commission from your lord to negotiate with my face? You are not out of your text, but we will draw the curtain and show the picture. Look you, sir, such a one I was this present. Is it not well done? Excellently done, if God did all. Tis in grain, sir, twill endure wind and weather. Tis beauty truly blent, uh, whose red and white nature's own sweet and cunning hand laid on lady. You are the cruelest she alive if you will lead this, these graces to the grave and, and leave the world no copy. Oh, sir, I will not be so hard-hearted. I will give out driver's schedules of my beauty. It shall be inventoried and every particle and utensil labeled at my will. As item, two lips in different red. Item, two gray eyes with lids to them. Item, one neck, one chin, and so forth. Were you sent hither to praise me? I see you what you are, and you are too proud. But if you were the devil, you are fair. My lord and master loves you. Oh, such love could be but recompensed through, though you were crowned the non-peril of beauty. How does he love me? 
with adoration, fertile tears with groans that thunder love with sighs of fire. Your love does know my mind. I cannot love him. Yet I suppose him virtuous, know him noble, of great estate, of fresh and stainless youth, in voices well divulged, free, learned, and valiant, and in dimension and the shape of nature, a gracious person. But yet I cannot love him. He might have took his answer long ago. If I did love you in my master's flame with such a suffering, such a deadly life, in your denial, I would find no sense. I would not understand it. Why? What would you? Make me a willow cabin at your gate and call upon my soul within the house. Write loyal cantons of contemned love and sing them loud even in the dead of night. Hallow your name to the reverberate hills and make the babbling gossip of the air cry out, Olivia! Oh, you should not rest between the elements of air and earth, but you should pity me. You might do much. What is your parentage? Above my fortunes, yet my state is well. I am a gentleman. Get to your lord. I cannot love him. Let him send no more, unless perchance you come to me again to tell me how he takes it. Fare you well. I thank you for your pains. Spend this for me. I am no feed post, lady. Keep your purse. My master, not myself, lacks recompense. Love makes his heart a flint that you shall love and let your fervor, like my master's, be placed in contempt. Farewell, fair cruelty. What is your parentage? Above my fortunes, at my state as well, I am a gentleman. I'll be sworn thou art, thy tongue, thy face, thy limbs, actions, and spirit, to give thee fivefold blazon. Not so fast, soft, soft. Unless the master were the man, how now? Even so quickly may one catch the plague. Methinks I feel this youth's perfections with an invisible and subtle stealth to creep in at mine eyes. Well, let it be. What ho, Malvolio? Here, madam, at your service. Run after the same peevish messenger, the countryman. He left this ring behind. Would I or not tell him I'll have none of it. Desire him not to flatter with his lord, no hold him up with hopes. I am not for him. If that the youth will come this way tomorrow, I'll give him reason for it. Hi thee, Malvolio. Madam, I will. I do I know not what the fear to find, mine eye too great a flatter in my, for my mind. Fate, show thy force. Ourselves we do not owe. What is decreed must be, and be this so. And that's Act One, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Whew. I'm going to take a breather here. Right. And um, uh, I'm, I'm hearing all, all the like subtle seduction roles that Cesario is throwing on Olivia right now are working. <laughs> and I was just saying in the chat that I like love hearing Ellie's voice go, okay. Like just the tone. <laughs> Start moving from a get out of here to get out of here. Can we talk for a second about um, Sir Toby Belch and Sir Andrew? Oh man, the bros of all bros. I am living for that scene. <laughs> I was saying it sounded like she was getting to that Zap Brannigan level of just like, ugh. You start to see the, <laughs> the short velour like tunic, no tights. <laughs> oh yeah. And I love that in a show that is about a woman pretending to be a man for the whole show and all the community the the you know misunderstandings that fall out of that in our random casting we have the majority of the male roles played by females tonight and the one that should be the woman playing the man is our dude ian <laughs> so it's like the, right now viola's like her costume, her disguise is so on point. She's just got this massive beard going on, and it is amazing. <laughs> I'm just uh, I'm ready to get into this comedic subplot. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, comedic? 
What? A, a comedy. <laughs> Where would that come from? Oh my oh goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay. That's so much fun. <laughs> so yes, we're going to keep saying this over and over. We were so excited to bring you this show and this act one totally proved us right. I'm, I'm living for everything you guys are doing right now. Huh. Shall we see what they're about to do next? Is everyone ready for more? All very, right. very good. Then let's keep rolling on. Act two, scene one. Will you stay no longer, nor will you not that I go with you? By your patience, no. My stars shine darkly over me. The malignancy of my fate my perhaps distemper yours. Therefore, I shall crave of you your leave that I may bear my evils alone. It were a bad recompense for your love to lay any of them on you. Let me yet know of you whether, let me yet know of you whether you are bound. No, sooth, sir. My determinate voyage is mere extravagancy. But I perceive in you so excellent a touch of modesty that you will not extort from me what I am willing to keep in. Therefore, it charges me in manners rather to express myself. You must know of me then, Antonio. My name is Sebastian, which I call Roderigo. My father was that Sebastian of Mezzaline, whom I know you have heard of. He left behind him myself and a sister, both born in an hour. If the heavens had been pleased, would we had so ended? But you, sir, altered that. For some hour before you took me from the beach of the sea was my sister drowned. Alas, the day. A lady, sir, though it was said she resembled me, yet of many accounted beautiful, but though I could not with such estimable wonder over far believe that, yet thus far I will boldly publish her. She bore a mind that envy cannot call but fair. She is drowned already, sir, with salt water, though I seem to drown her remembrance again with more. Pardon me, sir, your bad entertainment. Oh, good Antonio, forgive me your trouble. If you will not murder me for my love, let me be your servant. If you will not undo what you have done, that is, kill whom you have recovered, desire it not. Fare you well at once. My bosom is full of kindness, and yet I am so near the manners of my mother that upon the least occasion more mine eyes will tell tales of me. I am bound to the court or Sinio's court. Farewell. The gentleness of all the gods go with thee. I have many enemies in Orsino's court, else I would very shortly see thee there. But come up, May, I do adore thee, so that danger shall seem sport, and I will go. And scene. Onward we go to act two, scene two. Were not you even now with the Countess Olivia? Even now, sir, on a moderate pace, I have since arrived, but hither. Hmm. Well, she returns this ring to you, sir. You might have saved me my pains to have taken it away yourself. She adds, moreover, that you should put your lord into a desperate assurance she will none of him. And one thing more, that you, that you be never so hardy to come again in his affairs, unless it be to report your lord's taking of this. Receive it so. She took the ring of me, I'll none of it. Come, sir, you peevishly threw it to her, and her will is it should be so returned. <laughs> if it be worth stooping for, there it lies in your eye. If not, be it his that finds it. I left no ring with her. What means this lady? Fortune forbid my outside have not charmed her. She made good view of me, indeed, so much that sure me thought her eyes had lost her tongue, for she did speak and start distractedly. She loves me, sure. The cunning of her passion invites me in this churlish messenger, none of my lord's ring. Why, he sent her none. 
I am the man, if it be so, as tis. Poor lady, she were better love a dream, disguise, I see thou art of wickedness, wherein the pregnant enemy does much. How easy it is, is it for the proper faults and women's waxen hearts to set their forms. Alas, our frailty is the cause, not we, for such as we are made of such we be. How will this fadge? My master's love, her dearly, and I, poor monster, find as much on him as she, mistaken, seems to dote on me. What will become of this? As I am a man, my state is desperate for my master's love. As I am a woman now, alas the day, what thriftless sigh shall poor Olivia breathe? O oh, time, thou must untangle this, not I. It is too hard a knot for me to untie. Okay, act two, scene three. Approach, Sir Andrew. Not to be a bed after midnight is to be up betimes. And Dulaculo Sugere, thou knowest. Nay, my troth, I know not, but I know to be up late is to be up late. A false conclusion. I hate it as an unfilled can. To be up after midnight and to go to bed then is early, so that to go to bed after midnight is to go to bed betimes. Does not our life consist of the four elements? Faith, so they say, but I think it rather consists of eating and drinking. Thou art a scholar. Let us therefore eat and drink. Marion, I say, a stoop of wine. Here comes the fool, the faith. I, I'm having a hard time not blending the two. I'm sorry. <laughs> do it. Just do it. You're loving it. <laughs> How now, my hearts? Did you never see the picture of we three? Welcome, ass. Now, let's have a catch. By my troth, the fool has an excellent breast. I had rather than forty shillings I had such a leg, and so sweet a breath to sing as the fool has. In sooth, thou wast in very gracious fooling last night when thou spoke of an pigrogrammatus of the vapians passing the equator. I have no clue what that is. Equinocotal of Quibius. <laughs> Twas very good of faith. I set thee six sixpence for thy layman. Hast it? I did in Petticoat's bag gratility, for Malvolio's nose is no whipstock. My lady hath white hand, and the Myrmidons are no bottle el hasses. Excellent. Why, this is the best fooling when all is done. Now, a song. Come on, there's sixpence for you. Let's have a song. And there's the gestural of me too. If one night give a... Would you, would you have a love song or, or a song of good life? A love song, a love... Aye, aye, I care not for good life. Oh, mistress mine, where are you roaming? Oh, stay in here, your true love's coming. That can sing both high and low. Trip no further, pretty sweeting. Journeys end in lover's meeting. Every wise man's son doth know. Excellent, good effect. Good, good. What is love, tis not hereafter. Present mirth hath present laughter. What's to come is still unsure. In delay there lies no plenty. Then come, kiss me, sweet and twenty. Youth's stuff will not endure. A mellifulous voice as I am a true knight. A contagious breath. Very sweet and contagious of faith. To hear by the nose, it is dulcet and contagion. But shall we make the welkin dance indeed? Shall we rouse the night owl in a catch that will draw three souls out of one weaver? Shall we do that? Can you love me? Let's do it. I am a dog and a catch. Fire lady, sir, and some dogs will catch 
well. Most certain, let our catch be thou knave. Hold thy peace, thou knave, knight. I shall be constrained in to call thee knave, knight. Tis not the first time I have been constrained one to call me knave. Begin, fool, it begins, hold thy peace. Yeah, I shall never begin if I hold my peace. Good faith, come, begin. What a carawall you do keep here. If my lady have not called you up her steward Malvolio and bid him turn you out of doors, never trust me. My lady is a Catayan. We are politicians. Malvolio is a Pegaram's end. Three merry men be we. Am not I consanguineous? Am I not of her blood? Tilly Valley, lady, there dwelt a man in Babylon, lady, lady. Beshrew me, the knight's an admirable fooling. Aye, he does well enough if he be disposed, and so do I too. He does it with better grace, but I do it more natural. Oh, the twelfth day of December. For the love of God, peace. My masters, are you mad? <laughs> what are you? Have you no wit, manners, nor honesty, but to gabble like tinkers at this time of night? Do you make an ale house of my lady's house that you squeak out your kosher catches without any mitigation or remorse or voice? There's no respect of place, persons, or time on you! We did keep time, sir, in our catches. Snack up. Sir Toby, I must be round with you. My lady bade me tell you that, though she harbors you as her kinsman, she's nothing allied to your disorders. If you can separate yourself and your misdemeanors, you are welcome to the house. If not, and it would please you to take leave of her. She is very willing to bid you farewell. Farewell, dear heart, since I must needs be gone. Nay, good Sir Toby. His eyes do show his days are almost done. Is it even so? But I will never die. Sir Toby, there you lie. This is much credit to you. Who shall I bid him go? What an if you do? Shall I bid him go and spare not? <laughs> oh, no, 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 dare you not? Out of tune, sir, you lie. Art any more than a steward? Dost thou think, because thou art virtuous, there shall be no more cakes and ale? Yes, by St. Anne, and ginger shall be hot in the mouth, too. Thou art the right. Go, sir, rub your chin with crumbs. A stoop of wine, Maria. Mistress Mary, if you prized my lady's favor at anything more than contempt, you would not give means for this uncivil law. She shall know of it. By this hand. <gasps> Go oh, shake your ears. T'were as good a deed as to drink when a man's a hungry. To challenge him in the field, and then to bring promise with him and make a fool of him. Do it, knight. I'll write thee a challenge. Or I'll deliver thy indignation to him by word of mouth. Sweet Sir Toby, be patient for tonight. Since the youth of the courts was today with thy lady, she is much out of quiet. For Monsieur Malvolio, let me alone with him. If I do not gull him into a nay word and make him a common recreation, do not think I have wit enough to lie straight in my bed. I know I can do it. Possess us, possess us! Tell us something of him. Mary, sir, sometimes he is kind of a Puritan. Oh! If I thought that, I'd beat him like a dog. What, for being a Puritan? Thy exquisite reason, dear knight. 
I have no exquisite reason for it, but I have reason good enough. The devil of Puritan that he is, or anything constantly, but a time pleaser. An affectioned ass that cons the state without book and utters it by great swarce. The best persuaded of himself, so crammed as he thinks with excellencies, that it is his grounds of faith that all that look on him and love him. And on that vice in him will my revenge find notable cause to work. What wilt thou do? I will drop in his way some obscure epistles of love, wherein by the color of his beard, the shape of his leg, the manner of his gait, the expression of his eye, forehead, and complexion, he shall find himself most feelingly personated. I can write very like my lady, your niece. On a forgotten matter, we can hardly make a distinction of our hands. Oh, excellent! I smell a device. I have done my notes, too. He shall think, by the letters that thou wilt drop, that they come from my niece and that she's in love with him. My purpose is indeed a horse of that color. And your horse now would make him an ass. Ass, I doubt not. Oh, twill be admirable. Sport royal, I warrant you. I know my physic will work with him. I will plant you two and let the fool make a third where he shall find the letter. Observe his construction of it for this night to bed and dream on the event. Farewell. Oh, good night, Pen Penthesilia. Before me, she's a good wench. She's a beagle, true bred. One that adores me. <laughs> what is that? I was adored once, too. Let's to bed, knight. Thou hast need send for more money. Oh, if I cannot recover your niece, I'm in a foul way out. For money, knight. If thou hast her not in the end, call me cut. If I do not, never trust me. Take that how you will. Come, come. I'll go burn some sack. Tis too late to go to bed now. Come, knight. Come, knight. So many words I want to say. I <laughs> promise we wouldn't until the end of the acts. Uh, just... Uh, uh, act two, scene four, guys. <laughs> Give me some music. Now, oh, good morrow, friends. Now, good Cesario, but that piece of song, that old and antique song we heard last night, methought it did relieve my passion much more than light airs and recollected terms of these most brisk and giddy paced times. Come, but one verse. He's not here, so please, your lordship, uh, that should sing it. Who was it? The Feste, the jester, my lord. A fool that the Lady Olivia's father took much delight in. He is about the house. Seek him out and play the tune the while. Come hither, boy. If ever thou shalt love, in the sweet pangs that remember me, for such as I am, all true lovers are, unstayed and skittish in all motions else, save in the constant image of the creature that is beloved. How dost like this tune? It gives a very echo to the seat where Lord love is thrown. Ah, thou dost speak masterly, my life upon us. Young though thou art, thine eye hath stayed upon some favor that it loves, hath it not, boy? A little, by your favor. Uh, what kind of woman is it? Of your complexion. Uh, she's not worth thee, then. What years, in faith? About your years, my lord. Uh, too old, by heaven. Let still the woman take an elder than herself. So wears she to him, so sways she level in her husband's heart. For, boy, however we do appraise ourselves, our fancies are more giddy and unfirm, more longing wavering sooner lost and worn than women's are i think it well my lord then let thy love be younger than thyself or thy affection cannot hold the bent 
for women are as roses, whose fair flower being once displayed doth fall that very hour. And so they are, alas, that they are so. To die even when the, they to perfection grow. Oh, fellow, come, the song we had last night. Mark it, Cesario, it is old and plain. The spinsters and the knitters in the sun and the free maids that weave their thread with bones do use to chant it. It is silly sooth and dallies with the innocence of love like the old age. Are you ready, sir? Ay, prithee, sing. Come away, come away, death, and in sad cypress let me be lain. Fly away, fly away, breath, I am slain by a fair, cruel maid. My shroud of white stuck all with you. Oh, prepare it, my part of death, no one so true did share it. Not a flower, not a, not a flower sweet. On my black coffin let there be strown. Not a friend, not a friend to greet. My poor, my poor corpse where my bones shall be thrown. A thousand, thousand sighs to save. Lay me, oh, where sad true lover never find my grave to weep there. There's for thy pains. No pains, sir. I take pleasure in singing, sir. I'll pay thy pleasure, then. Truly, sir, and pleasure will be paid one time or another. Give me now leave to leave thee. Now the melancholy God protect thee, and the tailor make thy doublet changeable taffeta, for my mind, for thy mind is a very opal. I would have men of such constancy put to see that their business might be everything and their intent everywhere, for that it always makes a good voyage of nothing. Farewell. Let all the rest give place. Uh, once more, Cesario, get thee to yon the same sovereign cruelty. Tell her, my love, more noble than the world prizes not quantity of dirty lands. The parts that fortune hath bestowed upon her, tell her, I hold as giddy as fortune. But tis that miracle and queen of gems that nature pranks her and attracts my soul. But if she cannot love you, sir? <laughs> I cannot be so answered. Sooth, but you must. Say that some lady, as perhaps there is, hath for your love a great a pang of heart as you have for Olivia. You cannot love her, you tell her so. Must she not then be answered? There is no woman's sides can bide the beating of so strong a passion as love doth give my heart. No woman's heart so big do hold so much. They lack retention. Alas, their love may be called appetite, no motion of the liver but the palate that suffer sir fates, cloyment, and revolt. But mine is all as hungry as the sea and can digest as much. Make no compare between that love a woman can bear me and that I owe Olivia. Aye, but I know... What dost thou know? Too well what love women to men may owe. In faith, they are as true of heart as we. My father had a daughter, loved a man, as it might be, perhaps, were I a woman, I should your lordship. And what's her history? A blank, my lord. She never told her love, but let concealment, like a worm in the bud, uh, feed on her damask cheek. She pined and thought, and with a green and yellow melancholy, she sat like patience on a monument smiling at grief was not this love indeed we men may say more swear more but indeed our shows are more than will for still we prove much in our vows but little in our love but died thy sister of her love my boy i am all the daughters of my father's house and all the brothers too and yet i know not uh, sir Shall I to this lady? Ay, that's the theme. To her in haste. Give her this jewel. Say my love can give no place. Bide no denay. Wow. <laughs> Act two, scene five. Come thy way, Signor Fabian. Nay, I'll come. 
If I lose a scruple of the sports, let me be boiled to death with melancholy. Wouldst thou not be glad to have the niggardly, rascally sheepbiter come by some notable shame? I would exult, man. You know, he brought me out her favor with the lady about a bear baiting here. To anger him, we'll have the bear again, and we will fool him black and blue. Shall we not, Sir Andrew? I think Sir Andrew has gone deaf. Or mute. <laughs> Come away with us, man. Tell us what you think. Oh, sorry, sorry. I was lost in my cup. Uh, it's a thing. And do we not? It is pity of our lives. Here comes the little villain. How now, my metal of India? Get you three into the box tree. Malfolio's coming down this walk. He has been yonder in the sun, practicing his behavior to his own shadow this half hour. Observe him. For the love of mockery, for I know this letter will make a contemplative idiot of him. Close in the name of jesting. Lie thou there, for here comes a trout that must be caught with tickling. Tis but fortune, all is fortune. Maria once told me she did affect me, and I have heard herself come thus near that she should fancy it should be one of my complexion. <laughs> Besides, she uses me with more exalted respect than anyone else that follows her. What should I think on it? He's an overweening rogue. Oh, peace. Contemplation makes a rare turkey cock of him. How he jests under his advanced plumes. Slight, I could so beat the rogue. Peace, I say. To be Count Malvolio. Ah, rogue! Pistol him, pistol him! Peace, peace. There is example for it. The lady of the straw she married the yeoman of the wardrobe. Fine on him, Jezebel! Oi, peace. Now he's deeply in. Look how imagination blows him. Having been three months married to her, sitting in my state. Oh, for a stone bow to hit him in the eye. Calling my officers about me in my branched velvet gown, having come from a daybed where I have left Olivia sleeping. Fire and brimstone! Aye, peace, peace! And then to have the humor of state and after a demure travel of regard, telling them I know my place as I would they should do theirs, to ask for my kinsman, Toby, Bolts and shackles. Aye, peace, peace, peace. Now, now. With an obedient start, make out for him. I frown the while, and perchance wind my watch or play with some rich jewels. <laughs> Toby approaches, curtsies there to me. Oh, shall this fellow live? Though our silence be drawn from us with cars, yet peace. I extend my hand to him thus, quenching my familiar smile with an austere regard of control. And does not Toby take you a blow of the lips then? Saying, Cousin Toby, my fortunes haven't cast me on your niece. Give me this prerogative of speech. What? What? You must amend your drunkenness. Don't scab. Nay, patience, or we break the sinews of our plot. Besides, you waste the treasure of your time with a foolish knight. That's me, I'll warrant you. One, Sir Andrew. I knew it was I, for many do call me a fool. What employment do we have here? 
Now is when the woodcock near the gin. Oh, peace! And the spirit of humor's intimidate reading aloud to him. By my life, this is my lady's hand. These are her very C's, her U's, and her T's, and thus makes she her great P. It is in contempt of question, her hand. Her C's, her U's, and her T's. Why is that? To the unknown beloved, this and my good wishes. Oh, her very phrases. By your leave, wax soft and the impression her Lucretia, with which she uses to seal. Tis my lady. To whom should this be? This wins him, liver and all. Hmm. Jove knows I love, but who? Lips do not move. No man must. No, no man must know what follows. The number is altered. No man must know. This should be the Malvolio? Mary, hang thee, Brock. I may command where I adore, but silence like a Lucretian knife with bloodless stroke my heart doth gore. M-O-A-I doth sway my life. The excitement has frozen him. Excellent! Yeah. I. Oh, oh, M O A I doth sway my life. Nay, but first, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. <laughs> what, what dish of poison has she dressed him? And with what wing the stain checks it at? I may command where I adore. She may command me. I serve her. She is my lady. Why, this is evident to any formal capacity. There is no obstruction in this. And the end. What should that alphabetical position portend? If I could make that resemble something in me. Softly. M-O-A-I. Oh, I make up that. He is now at a cold scent. Sartre will cry upon it for this. Though it be as rank as a fox. M. Navolio! M! Why, that becomes my name! Did I not say it would work? It, he would work it out? The cur is excellent at faults. M. But then there is no co consonancy in the sequel. That suffers under probation. A should follow the O. But, uh, but A should follow, but O does. And the O shall end, I hope. Aye, or I'll cudgel him and make him cry, O. Oh. And then I comes behind. I and you had an any eye behind you, you might see more detraction at your heels and fortunes before you. M-O-A-I, this simulation is not the former, and yet to crush this a little, it would bow to me, for every one of these letters are in my name. Soft, here follows prose. If this fall into thy hand revolve, in my stars I am above thee, but be not afraid of greatness. Some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. Thy fates open their hands, let thy blood and spirit embrace them, and to inure thyself to what thou art like to be, cast thy humble sloth and appear fresh, be opposite with a kinsman, surly with servants, let thy tongue tang arguments of state, put thyself into the trick of singularity. She thus advises thee that sighs for thee. Remember who commended thy yellow stockings and wish to see thee ever cross guard. I say, remember, go to thou art made if thou desirest to be so. If not, let me see thee a steward still and the fellow of servants and not worthy to touch fortune's fingers. Farewell, she that would alter services with thee, the unfortunate, the fortunate, unhappy. Daylight and champagne discovers not more. This is open. I will be proud. 
I will read politic authors. I will baffle Sir Toby. I will wash off gross acquaintance. I will be point, devise the very man. I do not now fool myself to let imagination jade me for every reason excites to this that my lady loves me. She did commend my yellow stockings of late. She did praise my leg being cross bartered and in this she manifests herself to my love and with a kind of injunction drives me to lose habit of her liking. I think my stars, I am happy. I will be strange, stout in yellow stockings and cross guard shirts, even with the swiftness of putting on. <laughs> Jove and my stars be praised. There is yet a postscript. Thou canst not choose but now who I am, but know who I am. If thou entertainest my love, let it appear in thy smiling. My smiles become thee well. Therefore, in my presence, still smile, my dear, my sweet, I prithee. Jove, I thank thee, I will smile. I will do everything that thou wilt have me. I will not, <laughs> I will not give my part to this sport for pension of thousands to be paid from the Sophie. I could marry this wench for this device. So could I, too and ask no other dowry with her but such another jest. Nor I neither. Here comes my noble gold catcher. Will thou set thy foot on my neck? Or mine either. Shall I play my freedom a tray tip and become thy bond slave? Faith, or I either? Why, thou hast put him in such a dream that when the image of it leaves him, he must run mad. Nay, but say true. Does it work upon him? Like aqua vitae with a midwife. <laughs> if you will then see the fruits of my sport, mark his first approach before my lady. He will come to her in yellow stockings, and tis a color she abhors, and cross garnered, a fashion she detests. And he will smile upon her, which will now be so unsuitable to her disposition being addicted to a melancholy as she is, that it cannot but turn him into a noble contempt. If you will see it, follow me. To the gates of Tartar, the most excellent devil of wit. I'll make one too. Okay, and there was the act. Oh my dear goodness, so much. If we thought we had something to talk about in Act 1, Act 2. Okay, guys. That was an absolutely amazing monologue. Holy cow. <laughs> Your Majesty is a national treasure. She I really is. I love Your Majesty so much. It was, and it was I, well yeah. done. Well done. You guys well done are so totally stealing the show. Like, well, somebody said in the chat that, you know, this character or this actor still in the show. This actor, this this show has turned into a battle royale with you guys, <laughs> of everyone just stealing the scene from the last person. And honestly, I could not be more here for it. It's a heist. They're all stealing it together. Yes, <laughs> a Shakespearean heist. Yes. And, well, I can't and it's, choose it, the scenery, so um, I've got this instead. <laughs> and it's good to point out too that you know we are not immune from technical difficulties as we saw with with our Fabian, but uh, we, the show must go on, so. But you guys are doing a fantastic job, and I, I Finn, and the audience are completely here for it. Thank you. <laughs> and we, we are glad that you are back, Fabian. Thank you for making a yes. swift return as soon as you could. <laughs> yeah, try my best. Yes. I, I tried to hold up your accent in your absence, but. I, 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 I was like, this. Uh, you don't need me. I can step out. We're good. No, 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 no. We do. No. More here. switching. More switching. That's what this play needs. Oh, just more, more <laughs> shell games within a shell game. Oh my, oh my goodness. goodness! Hooray! We could just play hot potato with all the characters. <laughs> here, all you right, take everybody it. Everybody, roll a d twenty. Every line <laughs> is a new person. Just. <laughs> I need a percentile for your next roll. <laughs> my brain already hurts. <laughs> the best kind. I don't know if Yay. I can even keep up with that. This, this kind of brain fuzziness from all the smiling and laughing we're doing tonight is just the kind we need. 
Yes, that would oh. be fantastic. Okay, yes, our yes, dear yes. dear audience, I believe we are going to take a bit of an intermission to allow our actors to get up and stretch their legs and go do whatever they need to do around their house for a second, and we will be back shortly.
out to us. Well, um, I just, uh, I find it very interesting that this play is one of Shakespeare's most popular now. Um, it was not popular at all uh, in his lifetime. As far as we can tell, there is only um, a one recorded incident of this play being performed, just the one, and that was February 2nd, 1602. And it was performed um, at the behest of a group of lawyers. So, wow. yeah. And um, I don't know why they wanted this, uh, except, well, the idea that February 2nd is uh, the Feast of Candlemas, which is the official end of the Christmas season in the Anglican Church. And this one is Twelfth Night, which is, of course, the, the Feast of the Epiphany, which is um, also known as Three Kings Day, which is the feast that ends Christmas. It's the 12th day of Christmas, Twelfth Night. So there we go. That's I guess that's why since it's February 2nd is the end of the Christmas season. That would be why they chose this one, probably. And if everybody loved uh, all of Malvolio's sliminess and all of the bros looking to take Malvolio down, what did you say Malvolio's name literally means? Malvolio from the Latin meaning evil desire. And he's got that in spades. Dude, bra's going down. He sure does. <laughs> And the fact that we have all ladies just broing it out is just making my night. <laughs> and what kind of what kind of frat boy names are Andy and Toby, by the way? <laughs> oh well, it's only from the best of families, friend. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, if everyone's ready to dive right back into this thing, I know I am. I know you are. Let's make this happen. Everyone, go ahead and mute your mics if you are not in the next scene, and we will go to places. Act three, scene one. Save thee, friend, and thy music. Dost thou live by thy tabor? No, sir, I live by the church. Art thou a churchman? No such matter, sir. I do live by the church, for I do live at my house, and my house doth stand by the church. So thou mayest say the king lies by a beggar, if a beggar dwell near him or the church stands by thy tabor, if thy tabor stands by the church. You have said, sir, to see this age, a sentence is but a cheval glove to a good wit. How quickly the wrong side may be turned outward. Nay, that's certain. Uh, they that daily nicely with words may quickly make them wanton. I would therefore my sister had no name, sir. Why, man? Why, sir, her name's a word, and might make my sister listen. But indeed, words are very rascal, since bonds disgrace them. Thy reason, ma'am? Troth, sir, I can yield you none without words. And words are grown so false, I'm loath to proof, re to proof reason with them. Technical difficulty. Hold on. Oh no. Wait, no. Wait, you're not in Act Four. That's what's the problem. Uh, it just. It jumped to, to Act Four. It's wanting us to move along. No. <laughs> well, no. Tell it no. I hate it when that happens. We're at three one line twenty five, guys. Your computer is such a critic. Magically did that. Um, I warrant thou art a merry fellow and carest for nothing. Not so, sir. I do care for something. But in my conscience, sir, I do not care for you. If that be to care for nothing, sir, I would it make you invisible. Art now not thou the Lady Olivia's fool? No, indeed, sir. The Lady Olivia hath no folly. She will keep no fool, sir, till she be married, and fools are as like husbands as pilchards are to herrings. The husband's the bigger. I am indeed not her fool, but her corrupter of words. 
I saw the late at the Count Orsino's. Foolery, sir, does not walk does walk about the orb like the sun. It shines everywhere. I would be sorry, sir, but the fool should be as oft with your master as with my mistress. I think I saw your wisdom there. Nay, and, and thou pass upon me. I'll know more with thee. Hold, there's expenses for thee. Now Jove, in his next commodity of hair, send thee a beard. By my troth, I'll tell thee, I am almost sick for one though I would not have it grow on my chin. Uh, is thy lady within? Would not a pair of these have bred, sir? Yes, being kept together and put to use. I would play Lord Pandarus of Phrygia, sir, to bring Chrysidia to, Tr I can say this, Troilus. <laughs> I understand you. I feel you. <laughs> Got this. <laughs> Just well begged. <laughs> the, <laughs> you, sir. Just well begged. <laughs> the matter, I hope, is not grace, great sir, begging but a beggar. Chrysidia was a beggar. My lady is within, sir. I will construe to them whence you came, who you are, and what you would are out of my welkin. I might say element, but the word is overworn. This is fellow is wise enough to play the fool and to do that well craves a kind of wit. He must observe their mood on whom he jest, the quality of persons and the time, and like the haggard, check at every feather that comes before his eye. This is a practice as full of labor as a wise man's art for folly that he wisely shows his fit, but wise men, folly, fallen, quite taint their wit. Save you, gentlemen. And you, sir. You the God, monsieur. Et vous aussi, rotation of eternal? I hope so you are, and I am yours. Will you encounter the house? My niece is desirous you should enter, if your trade be to her. I am bound to your niece, sir. I mean, she is the li list of my voyage. Taste your legs, sir. Put them to motion. My legs do better understand me, sir, than I understand what you mean by bidding me taste my legs. I mean to go, sir, to enter. I will answer you with gate and entrance, but we are prevented. Most excellent, accomplished lady, the heavens rain odors on you. Not you, it's a rare courtier. Rain odors? Well. My matter hath no voice, lady, but to your own most pregnant and vouchsafed ear. Odors? Pregnant and vouchsafed? I'll get them all three ready. Let the garden door be shut and leave me to my hearing. Give me your hand, sir. My duty, madam, and my most humble service. What is your name? Cesario is your servant's name, fair princess. My servant, sir? T'was never merry world since lowly feigned was called compliment. Your servant to the Count Orsino youth. And he is yours, and his must needs be yours. Your servant's servant is your servant, madam. For him, I think not on him, for his thoughts, would they were blanks, rather than filled with me. Madam, I, I come to wet your gentle thoughts on his behalf. Oh, by your leave, I pray you, I bade you never speak again of him. But would you undertake another suit? I had rather hear you to solicit that than music from the spheres. Uh, dear lady... Give me leave, beseech you, I did send. After the last enchantment you did hear, a ring in chase of you, so did I abuse myself, my servant, and I fear me you. Under your hard construction must I sit, to force that on you in a shameful cunning, which you knew none of yours. What might you think? Have you not set mine honor at the stake, and baited it with all the unmuzzled thoughts that tyrannous heart can think? To one of your receiving enough is shown, 
A cypress, not a bosom, hides in my heart. So let me hear you speak. I pity you. That's a degree of, to love. No, not a grise, for tis a vulgar proof that very oft we pity enemies. Why then, methinks, tis time to smile again. O world, how apt the poor are to be proud. If one shall be a prey, how much the better to fall before the lion than the wolf. The clock upbraids me with the waste of time. Be not afraid, good youth, I will not have you. Yet when wit and youth has come to harvest, your wife is like to reap a proper man. Therein lies your way, due west. Then westward ho, grace and good disposition attend your ladyship. You're nothing, madam, to my lord by me. Stay, I prithee. Tell me what thou thinkest of me. That you do think you are, are not what you are. If I think so, I think the same of you. Then think you right, I am not what I am. I would say you were as I would have you to be. Would it be better, madam, than I am? I wish it might, for now I am your fool. Oh, what a deal of scorn looks beautiful in the contempt and anger of his lip. A murderous guilt shows not itself more soon than love that would seem hid, love's night noon. Cesario, by the roses of the spring, by maidenhood, honor, truth, and everything, I love thee so, maugre all thy pride, nor wit nor reason can my passion hide. Do not extort thy reasons from this clause, for that I woo thou there forced has no cause. But rather reason thus with reason fetter, love sought is good, but given unsought is better. By innocence I swear, and, and by my youth I have one heart, one bosom, and one truth. And that no woman has, nor never none, shall mistress be of it, save I alone. And so adieu, good madam. Nevermore will I my master's tears to you deplore. Yet come again, for thou perhaps mayst move that heart which now abhors to like his love. Okay. Let us do Act 3, Scene 2. No, Faith, I'll not stay a jot longer. Thy reason, dear Venom, give thy reason. You must yield your reason, Sir Andrew. Mary, I saw your niece do more favors to the Count's serving man than ever she bestowed upon me. I saw it in the orchard. Did she see thee the while, old boy? Tell me that. As plain as I see you now. This was great argument of love and toward you. Faith! Will you make an ass of me? I will prove it legitimate, sir, upon the oath of judgment and reason. And they have been grand jurymen since before Noah was a sailor. She did show favor to the youth in your sight only to exasperate you, to awake your Duramal's valor, to put you in fire heart and brimstone your liver. You should then have accosted her with some excellent jest, fire new from the mint, you should have banged the youth into dumbness. This was looked for at your hand, and this was balked. The double guilt of this opportunity, you let time wash off, and you are now sailed into the north of Milady's opinion, where you will hang like an icicle on the Dutchman's beard, unless you do redeem it by some uh, laudable attempt, either of valor or of policy. And be any way it must be with valor, for policy I hate. I had at least be bronzed as a politician. Why then, build me thy fortune, fortunes upon the basis of valor. Challenge me the Count's youth to fight with him. Hurt him in eleven places. My niece shall take note of it, and assure thyself there is no love broker in the world can more prevail in man's commendation with women than report of valor. There is no way but this, Sir Andrew. Will either of you bear me a challenge to him? Go, write it in a martial hand. Be cursed and brief. It is no matter how witty, so it be eloquent and full of invention. Taunt him with the license of ink. 
If thou thouest him some thrice, it shall not be amiss. And as many lines as will lie in thy sheet of paper, although the sheet were big enough for the bed of ware in England, set them down. Go about it. Let there be gall enough in thy ink, though thou write with a goose pen. No matter. About it. But where shall I find you? We'll call thee at the cubiculo. Go. Ah, this is a dear mannequin to you, Sir Toby. I have been dear to him, lad, some two thousand strong or so. We shall have a rare letter from him, but you'll not deliver it? Never trust me, then, and by all means stir on the youth to an answer. I think oxen and wainer ropes cannot hail them together. For Andrew, if he were opened and you find so much blood in his liver as will clog the mm. foot of a flea, I'll eat the rest of the anatomy. And his opposite, the youth, bears in his visage no great presage of cruelty. Look where the youngest wren of nine comes. If you desire the spleen and will lap yourself in the stitches, follow me. Yon Gull Malvolio is turned heathen, a very renegado. For there is no Christian that means to be saved by believing rightly can ever believe such impossible passages of grossness. He's in yellow stockings. <laughs> and cross-gartered? Most villainously, like a pedant that keeps a school in church. I've dogged him like his murderer. He does obey every point of the letter that I drop to betray him. He does smile his face into moral lines than is in the new map with the augmentation of the Indies. You have not seen such a thing as this. I can hardly forbear hurling things at him. I know my lady will strike him. If she do, he'll smile and take for a great favor. Come, bring us, bring us where he is. And so this trap is sprung. Oh. Whew. Onward we venture. Act three, scene three. I would not by my will have troubled you, but since you make your pleasure of your pains, I will no further chide you. I could not stay behind you. My desire, more sharp than file and steel, did spur me forth. And not all love to see you, though so much as might have drawn one to a longer voyage, but jealousy, what might befall your travel, being skillless in these parts, which to a stranger, unguided and unfriended, often prove rough and inhospitable. My willing love, the rather by these arguments of fear, set forth in your pursuit. My kind Antonio, I can no other answer make but thanks, and thanks and ever thanks. And oft good turns are shuffled off with such uncurrent pay, but were my worth as is my conscience firm, you should find a better dealing. What's to do? Shall we go see the relics of the town? Tomorrow, sir. Best first go see your lodging. I'm not weary, and tis long tonight. I pray you, let us satisfy our eyes with the memorials and the things of fame that do renown this city. Would you pardon me? I do not without danger walk these streets. Once in a sea fight gainst the Count, his galleys I did some service, of such note indeed, that were I taken here, it would scarce be answered. Be like you slew great number of his people? The offense is not of such a bloody nature, albeit the quality of the time and quarrel might have given us bloody argument. It might have since been answered in repaying what we took from them, which, for traffic's sake, most of our dead city did. Only myself stood out, for which, if I be lapsed in this place, I shall pay dear. Do not then walk too openly. It doth not fit me. Hold, sir, here's my purse. In the south suburbs, at the Elephant, is best to lodge. I will bespeak our diet, whilst you beguile the time and feed your knowledge with viewing of the town. There shall you have me. Why I your purse? Haply your eye shall light upon some toy you have desire to purchase. And your store, I think, is not for idle markets, sir. I'll be your purse bearer and leave you for an hour. To the elephant. I do remember. 
Now Acts 3, scene 4. I've sent after him. He says he'll come. How shall I feast him? What bestow of him? For youth is brought more oft than begged or borrowed. I speak too loud. Where's Malvolio? He is sad and civil and suits well for a servant with my fortunes. Where is Malvolio? He is coming, madam, but in a very strange manner. He is sure possessed, madam. Why? What's the matter? Does he rave? Oh, no, madam. He does nothing but smile. Your ladyship were best to have some guard about you if you come. For sure the man is tainted in his wits. Give him hither. I am as mad as he, if sad and merry madness equal be. How now, Malvolio? Sweet lady! Ho, ho! Smilest thou. I sent for thee upon a sad occasion. A sad lady. I could be sad. This does make some obstruction in the blood. This cross gathering, gartering. But what of that? <laughs> if it please the eye of one, it is with me as the very true sonnet is. Please one and please all. Why, how dost thou, man? What is the matter with thee? Not black in my mind, though. Yellow in my leg. It did come to his hands. And commands shall be executed. I think we do know the sweet Roman hand. Will thou go to bed, Movolio? Bed? Ah, <laughs> sweetheart, and I'll... Come to thee. God comfort thee. Why dost thou smile so and kiss thy hand so oft? How do you, Malvolio? At your request? <laughs> yes, nightingales answer Dawes. Why appear you with this ridiculous boldness before my lady? Be not afraid of greatness. Twas well writ. What meanest thou by that, Malvolio? Some are born great. Huh? Some achieve greatness. What sayest thou? And some have greatness thrust upon them? Heaven restore thee. Remember who commended thy yellow stockings? The yellow stockings? I wish to see these cross gartered. Cross gartered? Go to, thou art made, if thou desirest to be so. Am I made? If not, let me see the servant still. Why, this is very midsummer madness. Um, madam, <laughs> the young gentleman of Count Orsino's is returned. I, I could hardly entreat him back. He attends your ladyship's pleasure. I'll come to him. Good Mariah, let this fellow be looked to. Where's my cousin Toby? Let some of my people have a special care of him. I would not have him miscarry for the half of my dowry. <sighs> oh, oh, do they come near me now? No worse the man than Sir Toby to look to me. This concurs directly with the letter. She sends him on purpose that I may appear stubborn to him, for she incites me to that in the letter. Cast thy humble sloth, says she. Be opposite with kinsmen, surly with nervants. Let thy tongue tang with arguments of state. Put thyself into the trick of singularity and consequently sets down the manner how as a sad face, a reverend carriage, a slow tongue in the habit of some sir of note and so forth. I have limed her that it is Job's doing. And Jove, make me thankful. And when she went away now, let this fellow be looked to. Fellow! Not Malvolio, nor after my degree, but fellow. Why, 
everything adheres together. That no dram of a scruple, no scruple of a scruple, no obstacle, no incredulous or unsafe circumstance, what can be said? Nothing that can, that, I'm so excited. Nothing that can be, can come between me and the full prospect of my hopes. Well, Jove, not I, is the doer of this. And he is to be thanked. Which way is he, in the name of sanctity? If all the devils of hell be drawn in little, and the legion himself possessed him, yet I'll speak to him. Hey, here he is, here he is. How is it with you, sir? How is it with you, man? Go off. I discard you. Let me enjoy my private. Go off! Lo, how hollow the fiend speaks within him. Did I not tell you? Sir Toby, my lady, prays you to have a care of him. Aha! Does she so? Go to, go to. Peace, peace. We must deal gently with him. Let me alone. How do you, Malvolio? How is't with you? What, man, defy the devil! Consider he's an enemy to mankind. Do you know what you say? Lo, la you, and speak ill of the devil, how he takes it at heart. Pray God he be not bewitched. Carry his water to the wise woman. Mary, and it shall be done tomorrow morning if I live. My lady would not lose him for more than I'll say. How now, mistress? Oh, Lord. Oh, prithee, hold thy peace. This is not the way. Do you not see you move him? Let me alone with him. No way but gentleness. Gently, gently. This fiend is rough and will not be roughly used. Why, how now, my barcock? How dost thou, Chuck? Sir? I, Biddy, come with me. What, man? Tis not for gravity to play at cherry pit with Satan. Hang him, foul collier. Get him to say his prayers, good Sir Toby. Get him to pray. My prayers, minx. No, I warrant you, he will not hear of godliness. Oh, go hang yourselves all. You are idle, shallow things. I am not of your element. You shall know more hereafter. <laughs> Is't possible? If this were played upon a stage now, I could condemn it as an improbable fiction. <laughs> the very genius hath taken the infection of the device, man. <laughs> Nay, pursue him now. Let the device take air and taint. Oh, why, we shall make him mad indeed. <laughs> the house will be the quieter. Come, we'll have him in a dark room and bound. My niece is already in belief that he's mad. We will carry it thus for our pleasure and his penance till our very pastime, tired out of breath, prompt us to have mercy on him. At which time we will bring the device to the bar and crown thee for a finder of madmen. But see, but see. No More? matter for a May morning. More matter for a May morning. Oh, we, we both have the I'm same sorry, line, Sir Andrew. Line. <laughs> well, the Here's the challenge. It. <laughs> Read it. Warrant there's vinegar and pepper in it. Oh, it's so saucy. I use his eyes. I'll warrant him, but do read. Give me. Youth, whatsoever thou art, thou art but a scurvy fellow. Oh, good and valiant. Wonder not, nor admire not in thy mind why I do call thee so, for I will show thee no reason for it. Why, a good note that keeps you from the blow of the law. Thou comest to the Lady Olivia, and in my sight she uses thee kindly, but thou liest in thy throat. That is not the matter I challenge thee for. Very brief, and to exceeding good sense, less. I will waylay thee going home, where it is thy chance to kill me. Good. 
Thou killest me like a rogue and a villain. Still, you keep all the windy side of the law. Good. Fare thee well, and God have mercy upon one of our souls. He may have mercy upon mine, but my hope is better, and so look to thyself. Thy friend, as thou usest him, and thy sworn enemy, Andrew Augacheek. If this letter move him not, his legs cannot. I'll give it to him. You may have a very fit occasion for it. He is now in some commerce with my lady and will by and by depart. Go, Sir Andrew. Scout me for him at the corner of the orchard like a bum bailey. So soon as ever thou seest him, draw. And as thou drawest, swear horrible. For it comes to pass oft that a terrible oath, with a swaggering accent sharply twanged off, gives manhood more appropriation than ever proof itself would have earned him. Away! Nay, let me alone for swearing. Now, will not I deliver his letter? for the behavior of the young gentleman gives him out to be of good capacity and breeding. His employment between his lord and my niece confirms no less. Therefore, this letter, being so excellently ignorant, will breed no terror in the youth. He will find it comes from a clodpole. But, sir, I will deliver his challenge by word of mouth. Set upon Augacheek a notable report of valor, and drive the gentleman, as I know his youth will aptly receive it, into a most hideous opinion of his rage, skill, fury, and impetuosity. This will so fright them both that they will kill one another by the look, like cockatrices. <laughs> oh, here he comes with your niece. Give them way till he take leave, and presently after him. I will mediate the while upon some horrid message for the challenge. I have said too much unto a heart of stone and laid mine honor too uncherry on it. There's something in me that reproves my faults, but such a headstrong potent fault it is that it but mocks reproof. With the same behavior that your passion bears goes on my master's grief. Here. Wear this jewel for me. Tis my picture. Refuse it not. It hath no tongue to vex you. And I beseech you, come again tomorrow. What shall you ask of me that I'll deny? That honor saved may upon asking give? Nothing but this. Your true love for my master. How with mine honor may I give him that which I have given to you? I will acquit it you. Acquit you. We'll come again tomorrow. Fare thee well. A friend like thee might bear my soul to hell. Gentlemen, God save thee. And you, sir. That defense thou hast, betake thee to it. Of what nature the wrongs are thou hast done him, I know not. But thy interceptor, full of despite, bloody as the hunter, attends thee at the orchard end. Dismount thy tuck, be yare in thy preparation. For thy assailant is quick, skillful, and deadly. Uh, uh, you mistake, sir. Uh, I am sure no man hath any quarrel to me. Uh, my remembrance is, is very free and, and clear from any image of uh, offense done to any man. You'll find it otherwise, I assure you. Therefore, if you hold your life at any price, betake you to your guard. For your opposite hath in him what youth, strength, skill, and wrath can furnish man withal. I, I pray you, sir, what is he? He is knight, dubbed with unhatched rapier and on carpet consideration. But he is a devil in a private brawl. Souls and bodies hath he divorced three, and his instrument at this moment is so implacable that satisfaction can be none but by pangs of death and sepulchre. Hobnob is his word. Give it or take it. I will return again into the house and, and desire some conduct of the lady. I, I am no fighter. I have heard of some kind of men that, that put quarrels purposely on others to taste of their valor. I'd be like this is a, a man of that quirk. Sir, he arrives itself out of a very competent injury. 
Therefore, get you on and give him his desire. Back you shall not to the house, unless you undertake with me, which with as much safety you might answer him. Therefore, on, or strip your sword stark naked, for metal you must, that's certain, or forswear to wear iron about you. Uh, this is uncivil as strange. I beseech you, do me this courteous office as to know of the night what my offense to him is. It is something of my negligence, nothing of my purpose. I will do so. Signor Fabian, stay you by this gentleman till my return. Pray you, sir, do you know of this matter? I, I know this knight is incensed against you, even to a mortal arbitrament, but nothing of the circumstance more. I beseech you, what manner of man is he? Oh, nothing of that wonderful promise. To read him by his form, as you were to like to find him uh, in the pool of his valour. He is indeed, sir, the most skilful, bloody, and fatal opponent that you could possibly have found in any part of Illyria. Will you walk towards him? I will make your peace with him if I can. I shall be much bound to you for it. I am one that had rather go with Sir Priest than Sir Knight. I care not who knows so much of, of my metal. Why, man, he's a very devil. I have not seen such a farrago. I had a pass with him, rapier, scabbard and all, and he gives me the stuck in with such a mortal motion that it is inevitable. And on the answer, he pays you as surely as your feet hit the ground they step on. They say he has been fencer to the Sophie. Sir Andrew is just stunned into silence. <laughs> Sir Andrew, I think that new beard has gotten in the way of your mouth. Oh, the struggle's Sir real Andrew. on Sir Andrew. Andrew. The beard. Might we take it? I'll not meddle with him. <laughs> Try it again. <laughs> Aye, but he will not now be pacified. Fabian can scans hold him yonder. Lost the line. I'm so sorry, you guys. But all right, we're at 269. Thank you. I hit space and it jumped my uh, <laughs> thing. I was trying to unmute. Plague on it, and I thought he'd been valiant and so cunning and fence. I'd have seen him damned ere I'd have challenged him. Let him let the matter slip, and I'll give him my horse gray capulet. I'll make the motion. Stand here, make a good show on it. This shall end without the perdition of souls. Mary, I'll ride your horse as well as I ride you. I have his horse to take up the quarrel. I have <laughs> Feels. Did you finish that line with the devil? Did yeah. I miss it? Oh, oh. <laughs> my audio cut out. Oh, my apologies. He is a horribly conceited of him, and pants and looks pale, as if a, a bear were on its heels. There's no remedy, sir. He will fight with you, for oath's sake. Mary, he hath better bethought him of his quarrel, and he finds that now scarce to be worth talking of. Therefore, draw for your supportance of his vow. He protests he will not hurt you. Pray God defend me. A little thing would make the tell me tell them how much I lack of a man. Now, give ground if you see him furious. Come, Sir Andrew, there's no remedy. The gentleman will, for his honor's sake, have one bout with you. He cannot by the duello avoid it. But he has promised me, as he had, is a gentleman and a soldier, he will not hurt you. Come on, do it. Oh, pray God he keep his oath. I do assure you, tis against my will. Put up your sword. If this young gentleman hath done offence, I take the fault on me. If you offend him, I for him defy you. You, sir? Why, what are you? One, sir, that for his love dares yet do more than you have heard him brag to you he will. Nay, if you be an undertaker, I am free. Oh, 
Good, Sir Toby, hold! Here come the officers! I'll be with you, Anna. Pray, sir, put your sword up, if you please. Marry will I, sir, and for that I promised you I'll be as good as my word. He will bear you easily and reigns well. This is the man. Do thy office. Antonio, I arrest thee at the suit of Count Ersonio. You do mistake me, sir. No, sir. No, no jot. I know your favor well. Though, though now you have no sea cap on your head, take him away. He knows I know him well. I must obey. This comes with seeking you, but there's no remedy. I shall answer it. What will you do now my necessity makes me ask you for my purse? It grieves me much more for what I cannot do for you than what befalls myself. You stand amazed, but be of comfort. Come, sir, away. I must entreat of you some of that money. Uh, what money, sir? For the fair kindness you have showed me here, and in part being prompted by your present trouble, out of my lean and low ability, I'll lend you something. My having is not much. I'll make my division of my present with you. Hold, uh, there's half my coffer. Will you deny me now? Is it possible that my deserts to you can lack persuasion? Do not tempt my misery, lest that it make me so unsound a man as to upbraid you with those kindnesses that I have done for you. I know of none, nor know I you by voice or any feature. I, I hate ingratitude more in a man than lying, vainness babbling, drunkenness, or any taint of vice whose strong corruption inhabits our frail blood. Oh, heavens themselves. Come, um, sir, I pray you, go. Let me speak a little. This youth that you see here, I snatched one half out of the jaws of death, relieved him with such sanctity of love, and to his image, which methought did promise most venerable worth, did I devotion. What's that to us? The time goes by. Away. But oh, how vile an idol proves this god. Thou hast, Sebastian, done good feature, shame. In nature there's no blemish but the mind. None can be called deformed but the unkind. Virtue is beauty, but the beauteous, evil, are empty trunks or flourished by the devil. The man grows mad. Away with him. Come, come, sir. Lead me on. Methinks his words do from such passion fly that he believes himself. So do not I. Prove true, imagination. Oh, prove true that I, dear brother, be now taken for you. Come hither, knight. Come hither, Fabian. We'll whisper or a couplet or two of most sage saws. He named Sebastian, my brother, no yet living in my glass. Even such and so in favor was my brother. He went still in this fashion, color, ornament, for him I imitate. Oh, if it prove tempest are kind and salt waves fresh in love. A very dishonest poultry boy, and more a coward than a hare. His dishonesty appears in leaving his friend here in necessity and denying him. And for his cowardship, ask Fabian. A coward? A most devout coward, religious in it. Slid all after him and beat again and beat him. Do, cuff him soundly, but never draw thy sword. And I do not. Come, let's see the event. I dare lay any money to be nothing yet. Oh my god, guys, like, <laughs> what is happening in this place? Oh. It's, so, I mean, it's, it's Mean Girls William Shakespeare style, which is yeah. apparently a thing. Apparently. Oh. Shakespeare loved the plastics. He did. <laughs> he, like, the whole is butter a carb feeding the um, uh, 
weight gain it's bar. That just, yes. That just oh. reeks of everything happening to Malvolio right now. Um, oh. And you know what? He, you know, Shakespeare loved his parallels and what's happening to Malvolio and what's happening to Antonio right now, both are just losing their dang mind. <laughs> the poor deers. Uh, the gaslighting poor lambs. is the finest. Gaslighting before that was even a term. <laughs> gaslighting before there were lamps to light. Oh my gosh. It's the, it's the best. It's the best of what's happening here. Whew. All right. <laughs> Somebody Sorry, the, the beer is getting um, at my chin. <laughs> This one time, Andrew drew a sword on me, and it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, like, went full barbarian halfway through that scene. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was oh like, God. all of a sudden, he's like, oh, wait. I, I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I got a posture. We got a posture. Yeah, all of a sudden, it's. Goblin went from uh, scene stealing to the beard stealing the scene. I mean, it was, yes. it was awesome. Yeah, I, the beard had to go. It, it was starting to really irritate me. I'm sure it's chin. a little, it's, you know. Hey, the struggle is real. real. When you start growing hair on your face, you get some itches. I'm, I'm getting on it. Like, that's, I feel that's for your men. avenue. Yeah. <laughs> but then, like, all of a sudden, Sir Andrew has flown into a rage. <laughs> what is going on right now? <laughs> He's not happy. Oh, goodness. Oh, well, God. shall we carry on, children? Yes, please. yes, please. Act four, scene one, everybody. Will you make me believe that I am not sent for you? Go to, go to. Thou art a foolish fellow. Let me be clear of thee. Well, held out in faith, no, I do not know you, nor am I not sent to you by my lady to bid you come speak with her nor your name is not Master Cesario, nor, nor this is not my nose, neither. Nothing that is so is so. I prithee, vent thy folly somewhere else. Thou knowest not me. Vent my folly? He has heard that word off some great man and now applies it to a fool. Vent my folly. I am afraid this great lubber the world will prove cockney. I prithee now, ungrid thy strangeness, and tell me what I shall vent to my lady. Shall I vent to her that thou art coming? I prithee, foolish Greek, depart from me. There's money for thee. If you tarry longer, I shall give worse payment. By my troth, thou hast an open hand. These wise men that give fools money give themselves a good report after 14 years purchase. I'm sorry, I got muted and I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> now, sir, have I met you again? That's for you. Why, there's for thee, and there, and there, are all these people mad? Hold, sir, I'll throw your dagger or the house. <laughs> this will I tell my lady straight. I would not be in some of your coats for two pence. On, sir, hold! Nay, let him alone. I'll go another way to work with him. I'll have an action of battery against him if there's that be any law in Illyria. Though I struck him first, yet it's no matter for that. Let go thy hand. Come, sir, I will not let you go. Come, my young soldier, put up your iron. You are well fleshed. Come on! I will be free from thee. What wouldst thou now, if thou darest tempt me further, draw thy sword? What? What? Nay, then I must have an ounce or two of this malapert blood to you. Hold, Toby. On thy life I charge thee hold. Madam! Would it ever be thus? Ungracious wretch, fit for the mountains and the barbarous caves. 
where manners ne'er were preached, out of my sight. Be not offended, dear Cesario, rude as by a beacon. I pray thee, gentle friend, let thy fair wisdom, not thy passion, sway in this uncivil and unjust extent against thy peace. Go with me to my house, and hear thou there how many fruitless pranks this ruffian hath botched up, that thou thereby mayest smile at this. Thou shalt not choose, but go. Do not deny. Be shrew his soul for me. He started one poor heart of mine in thee. What, what relish is in this? How runs the stream? Or, or am I bad? Or else this is a dream. Let fancy still my sense and lethe steep. If, if it be thus to dream, still let me sleep. Nay, come, I prithee, would thou be ruled by me? Madam, I will. Oh, say so, and so be. And the twists and turns continue. So on to act four, scene two. Nay, I prithee, put on this gown and this beard. Make him believe thou art Sir Topa the curate. Do it quickly. I'll call Sir Toby the Wasp. Fool, thou hast better be getting on thy dress. Oh, my dear fool. Feste, we cannot hear. All of that energy into the mustache. Oh, but you were muted, my dear. It, it, oh, it, man, I knew it was going to happen to me eventually. It's fake <laughs> facial hair. We found out the common tie. If you fake facial hair, we <laughs> will stop hearing you. It's not just me. <laughs> See, having perfect oh, facial man. hair means that your mic is always on when you want it to be. <laughs> yes. Cool. It's fine. <laughs> All right, well, I'll put it on and I will dissemble myself in it. And I would I were the first that ever dissembled in such a gown. I am not tall enough to become the function well, nor lean enough to be thought a good student, but to be said an honest man and a good housekeeper goes as fairly as to say a careful man and a great scholar. The competitors enter. Jove bless thee, Master Parson. Boros dias, Sir Toby, for as the old hermit of Prague that never saw a pen in ink very wittily said to a niece of King Gorbaduk, <laughs> that is it. There are that, that, that is, is. So I being master parson am master parson for what is, for what is that but that and is but is. To him, Sir Topas. Paint in this prism. The knave counterfeits well, a good knave. Who calls there? Sir Topaz, the curate, who comes to visit Malvolio, the lunatic. Sir Topaz, Sir Topaz, Sir Topaz, go to my lady. And out hyper hyperbolical. <laughs> I know my words, I promise. Out, hyperbolical fiend! How vexest thou, man! Ta talkest thou nothing but of ladies? Well said, Master Parson. Sir Topas, never was man thus wronged. Good Sir Topas, do not think I am mad. They have laid me in here in hideous darkness. Fie, thou dishonest Satan! I call thee by the most modest terms, for I am one of those gentle ones, will use the devil himself with courtesy. Sayest thou that house is dark? As hell, Sir Topas. Why, it hath, win it hath bay windows transparent as barricades, and the clusteries toward the south north are as lustrous as ebony, and yet Complainest thou of obstruction? I am not mad, Sir Chopas. I say to you, this house is dark. 
Madman thou errest, I say, there is no darkness but ignorance, in which thou art more puzzled than the Egyptians in their fog. I say, this house is as dark as ignorance, though ignorance were as dark as hell, and I say, there was never man thus abused. I am no more mad than you are. Make the trial of it in any constant question. What is the opinion of Pythagoras concerning wildfowl? That the soul of your own, of our own grandam might apply. Let me start again. That the soul of our grandam might happily inhabit a bird. What thinkest thou of his opinion? I think nobly of the soul and no way approve his opinion. Fare thee well, remain, in thou, remain thou still in darkness. Thou shalt hold the opinion of Pythagoras, ere I will allow of thy wits, and fear to kill a woodcock, lest thou disposes this soul of thy grandam. Fare thee well. My most exquisite Sir Topas. Nay. I am for all waters. Thou mightest have done this without thy beard and gown. He sees thee not. To him in thine own voice, and bring me word how thou find'st him. I would we were well rid of this knavery. If he may be conveniently delivered, I would he were. For I am now so far in offense with my niece that I cannot pursue with any safety this sport to the upshot. Come by and by to my chamber. Hey, Robin, jolly Robin, tell me how thy lady does. Fool! My lady is unkind, purdy. Fool! Alas, why is she so? Fool, I say! She loves another. Who calls, huh? Oh, good fool! As ever thou wilt deserve well at my hand, help me to a candle and pen, ink and paper. As I am a gentleman, I will live to be thankful to thee for it. Master Malvolio. Aye, good fool. Alas, sir, how fell you besides your five wits? Oh, there was never a man so notoriously abused. I am as well in my wits, fool, as thou art. But as well, then you are mad indeed, if you be no better in your wits than a fool. They have here property me, keep me in darkness, send ministers to me, asses, and do all they can to face me out of my wits. Advise what you say, or advise you what you say. The minister is here. Malvolio, Malvolio, the wits, the heavens restore. Endeavor thyself to sleep and leave thy vain bibble babble. Sir Topas! Maintain no words with him, good fellow. Who, I, sir? Not I, sir. God be with you, Sir Topas. Mary, amen. I will, sir. I will. Fool! 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 I say! Alas, sir, be patient. What say you, sir? Am I shint for speaking to you? Oh, good fool. Help me to some light and some paper. I tell thee, I am as well in my wits as any man in Elaria. Well, a day that you were, sir. By this hand, I am. <clears throat> Good fool, some ink, paper, and light, and convey what I will set down to my lady. It shall advantage thee more than ever the bearing of letter did. Uh, help me to it. But tell me true, are you not mad indeed? Or do you but counterfeit? Believe me, I am not. I tell thee true. Nay, I'll ne'er believe a madman till I see his brains. I will fetch you light and paper and ink. Fool, I'll requite it in the highest degree. I prithee, be gone. 
I am gone, sir, and anon, sir. I'll be with you again in a trice, like to the old vice. Your need to sustain, who with dagger of lath, in his rage and his wrath, cries, aha, to the devil, like a mad lad. Pare thy nails, dad. Adieu, good man devil. Oh, man. Okay. I can't even with you people. Every time I think that I've heard all the voices that are going to come out of people tonight, nope. Nope. That was amazing. All right. We are pre pleasantly surprised on we, just everybody. <laughs> we are. Act four, scene three, please. This is the air. That is the glorious sun. This pearl she gave me. I do feel it and see it. And though tis wonder that enwraps me thus, yet tis not madness. Where's Antonio then? I could not find him at the elephant, yet there he was, and there I found this credit that he did range the town to seek me out. His counsel now might do me golden service. For though my soul disputes well with my sense that this may be some error, but no madness, yet doth this accident and flood of fortune so far exceed all in instance, all discourse that I am ready to distrust mine eyes and wrangle with my reason that persuades me to any other trust, but that I am mad, or else the lady's mad, yet if twere so, she could not sway her house, command her followers, take and give back affairs, and then dispatch with such a smooth, discreet, and stable bearing as I perceive she does. There's something in it that is deceivable, but here the lady comes. Blame not this haste of mine, if you mean well. Now go with me, and with this holy man, into the chantry by. There before him and underneath that consecrated roof, plight me the full assurance of your faith that my most jealous and too doubtful soul may live at peace. He shall conceal it. Whilst you are willing it, shall come to note. What time we will, we will our celebration keep according to my birth, what do you say? I'll follow this good man and go with you, and having sworn truth ever will be true. Then lead the way, good father and heaven so shine that they may fairly note this act of mine. All right, I'm gonna call it out to see if I'm accurate on this. Shortest scene in all Shakespeare? 36 lines on it. Is there a shorter one? I think that's the shortest one. I can't one. think of one, no. That, that would be a Terry question to answer. That's what, that's what I'm looking at right now. I can't think of one off the top of my head. Um, no, I don't think so. Nice. I'm, I'm not saying for definite, but I, I can't think of one. Let's see, just a quick Google search. It looks like Anthony and Cleopatra, Act 3, Scene 9. There you go. Eh, nobody cares about that. Uh, there's in, let's see. <laughs> no, that's a great Act 4, Scene 11, and Mary Wise of Windsor, Act 5, Scene 4, all have only four lines in them. Four oh. lines? Wow. Yep. Okay. That's crazy. Okay, well, glad we know. Here I am being impressed by a 35 line scene and he did it in four somewhere else. Uh, Strike is actually saying in the chat that in Mary Wise of Windsor, act five, scene four. Yep. yep. I think that's one of the ones that uh, John just mentioned. Very well done. So good yeah. job, Strike. Bravo, Strike. And All right, it, let's bring this home, shall we, people? Act five, scene one. Now, as thou lovest me, let me see his letter. Good Master Fabian, grant me another request. Anything. Do not desire to see this letter. This is to give a dog and in recompense desire my dog again. <laughs> Belong you to the Lady Olivia, friends? Aye, sir, we are some of her trappings. I know thee well. How dost thou, my good fellow? Truly, sir, the better for us for my friends. Just the contrary, the better for thy friends. No, sir, the worse. How can that be? 
Mary, sir, they praise me and make an ass of me now. My foes tell me plainly I am an ass. So that by my foes, sir, I profit in the knowledge of myself, and by my friends I am abused. So that, conclusions to be as kisses, if your four negatives make your two affirmatives, then the worse for my friends and the better for my foes. <laughs> Why, this is excellent. By my troth, sir, no, though it please you to be one of my friends. Thou shalt not be the worse for me, there's gold. But that would be devil dealing, sir. I would, you could make it another. Now you give me ill counsel. Put your grace in your pocket, sir, for this once, and let your flesh and blood obey it. Well, I will be so much a sinner to be a double dealer. There's another. Primo secundo terito. <laughs> It is a good play, and the old saying is, the third pays for all. The triplex, sir, is a good tripping, is a good tripping measure, or the bells of St. Bennet, sir, may put you in mind. One, two, three. You can no, you can fool no more money out of me at this throw. If you will let your lady know I am here to speak with her, and bring her along with you, it may awake my bounty further. Mary, sir, lullaby to your bounty till I come again. I go, sir, but I would not have you think that my desire of having is the sin of covetedness. But as you say, sir, let your bounty take a nap. I will awaken it anon. Here comes the man, sir, that did rescue me. That face of his I do remember well, yet when I saw it last, it was besmeared, as black as Vulcan in the smoke of war. A bobbling vessel was he captain of, for shallow draught and bulk unprizable, with which such scathful grapple did he make with the most noble bottom of our fleet, that very envy and the tongue of loss cried fame and honor on him. What's the matter? Of course, you know, this is that Antonio that took the phoenix and her fraught from candy. And this is he that did the tiger board when your young nephew Titus lost his leg. Here in the streets, desperate of shame and state, in private brabble did we apprehend him. He did me kindness, kindness, sir, drew on my side, but in conclusion put strange speech upon me. I know not what was but distraction. Notable pirate. Thou saltwater thief, what foolish boldness brought thee to their mercies, whom thou in terms so bloody and so dear hast made thine enemies? Orsino, noble sir, be pleased that I shake off these names you give me. Antonio never yet was thief or pirate, though, I confess, on base and ground enough, Orsino's enemy. A witchcraft drew me hither. That most ingrateful void there by your side, from the rude seas enraged and foamy mouth, did I redeem. A wreck past hope he was. His life I gave him, and did thereto add my love, without retention or restraint, all his in dedication. For his sake did I expose myself, pure for his love, into the danger of this adverse town, drew to defend him when he was beset, where being apprehended, his false cunning, not meaning to partake with me in danger, taught him to face me out of his acquaintance, and grew a twenty years removed thing, while one would wink, denied me my own purse, which I had recommended to his use not half an hour before. How can this be? When came he to this town? Today, my lord, and for three months before, no interim, not a minute's vacancy. Both day and night did we keep company. Here comes the Countess, now heaven walks on earth, but for thee, fellow, fellow, thy words are madness. Three months this youth hath tended upon me, but more of that anon. Take him aside. What would my lord but that he may not have, wherein Olivia may seem serviceable? Cesario, you do not keep promise with me. Madam? Gracious Olivia. What do you say, Cesario? Good, my lord. My lord would speak. My duty hushes me. If it ought to the old tune, my lord, 
It is as fat and fulsome to mine ear as howling after music. Still so cruel. Still so constant, Lord. What, to perverseness? You uncivil lady, to whose ingrate and unauspicious altars my soul the faithfulest's offerings have breathed out that e'er devotion tendered, what shall I do? Even what it please my lord that shall become him. Why should I not, had I the heart to do it, like to the Egyptian thief at point of death, kill what I love? A savage jealousy that sometimes savors nobly. But hear me this. Since you to non-regardance cast my faith, and that I partly know the instrument that screws me from my true place in your favor, live you the marble-breasted tyrant still. But this your minion, whom I know you love, and whom by heaven I swear I tender dearly, him I will tear out of that cruel eye where he sits crowned in his master's spite. Come, boy, with me. My thoughts are ripe in mischief. I'll sacrifice the lamb that I do love despite a raven's heart within a dove. And I, most jocund, are apt and willingly to do you rest a thousand deaths would die. Where goes Cesario? Uh, after him, I love more than I love these eyes, more than my life, more by all mores than e'er I shall love wife. If I do feign your witness above, punish my life for tainting of my love. I, me detested, how am I beguiled? Who does beguile you? Who does do you wrong? Hast thou forgotten thyself? Is it so long? Call forth the Holy Father. Come, away. Whither, my lord? Cesario, husband, stay. Husband? I, husband, can he that deny? Her husband, sirrah? No, my lord, not I. Alas, it is the baseness of thy fear that makes thee strangle thy property. Fear not, Cesario, take thy fortunes up. Be that thou knowest thou art, and then thou art as great as thou fearest. Oh, welcome, father. Father, I charge thee by thy reverence here to unfold, though lately we intended to keep in darkness and what occasion revels before it is ripe, what thou dost know hath newly passed between this youth and me. A contract of eternal bond of love, confirmed by mutual joinder of your hands, attested by the holy close of lips, strengthened by entertainment of your rings, and all the ceremony of this compact, sealed in my function, by my testimony, since when my watch hath told me toward my grave, I have traveled but Two hours. Oh, thou dissembling cub. What wilt thou be when time hath sowed a grizzle on thy case? Or will thou not else thy craft so quickly grow that thine own trip shall be thine overthrow? Farewell, and take her, but direct thy feet where thou and I henceforth may never meet. My lord, I, I do protest. Oh, do not swear. Hold little faith, though thou hast too much fear. For the love of God, a surgeon! <laughs> Send one presently to Sir Toby. What's the matter? He has broke my head across and has given Sir Toby a bloody coxcomb too. For the love of God, your help! I had rather than forty pound I were at home. Who has done this, Sir Andrew? The couch gentleman, one Cesario. We took him for a coward, but he's the very devil incarnate. My gentleman, Cesario? On lifelinks, here he is! You broke my head for nothing, and that I did. I was set on to do it by Sir Toby. Why do you speak to me? I, I never hurt you. Uh, you drew your sword upon me without cause, but I bespoke you fair and hurt you not. 
If a bloody coxcomb be a hurt, you have hurt me. I think you said nothing by a bloody coxcomb. Here comes Sir Toby haltingly. You shall hear more. But if he had not been in drink, he would have tinkled you other gates than he did. How now, gentlemen? How is it with you? That's all one. He has hurt me, and there's the end on it. Sot. Did see Dick Surgeon sot? Oh, he's drunk, Sir Toby, an hour agone. His eyes were set at eight in the morning. Then he's a rogue and a passy measures pavin. I hate a drunken rogue. Away with him. Who hath made this havoc with them? I'll help you, Sir Toby, because we'll be dressed together. Will you help? An ass head and a coxcomb and a knave. A thin-faced knave. A gall. <laughs> Get him to bed. Let this hurt be looked to. I am sorry, madam. I have hurt your kinsman. But, had it been the brother of my blood, I must have done no less with wit and safety. You, you throw a strange regard upon me. And by that I do perceive it hath offended you. Pardon me, sweet one, even for the vows we made to each other, but so late ago. One face, one voice, one habit, and two persons, a natural perspective that is and is not. Antonio, oh, my dear Antonio, how have the hours racked and tortured me since I have lost thee? Sebastian, are you? Fearest thou that, Antonio? How have you made division of yourself? An apple cleft in two is not more twin than these two creatures. Which is Sebastian? Most wonderful. Do, do I stand there? I never had a brother, nor can there be that deity in my nature of here and everywhere. I had a sister whom the blind waves and surges have devoured. Of charity, what, what kin are you to me? What countryman, what name, what parentage? Of Messaline. Uh, Sebastian was my father, such a Sebastian was my brother too. So what he suited to his watery tomb, if spirits can assume both form and suit you come to fright us. A, a spirit I am indeed, but am in that dimension grossly clad from which, from womb I did participate. Were you a woman, as the rest goes even, I should my tears let fall upon your cheek and say thrice welcome, drowned Viola. My father had a mole upon his brow. And so had mine. And died that day when Viola from her birth had numbered thirteen years. Oh, that record is lively in my soul. He finished indeed his moral act that day that made my sister thirteen years. If nothing lets to make us happy both, but this my masculine youth suit to tire. Do not embrace me till each circumstance of place, time, fortune do cohere, and jump that I am Viola. Which to confirm, I'll bring you to a captain in this town, where lies my maiden weeds, by whose gentle help I was preserved to serve this noble count. All the occurrence of my fortune since hath been between this lady and this lord. So comes it, lady. You have been mistook. But nature to her bias drew in that. You would have been contracted to a maid. Nor are you there th therein by my life deceived. You are betrothed both to a maid and a man. Be not amazed. Right noble is his blood. If this be so, as yet the glass seems true, I shall have share in this most happy wreck. Boy, thou hast said to me a thousand times, thou never shouldst love woman like to me. In all those sayings will I overswear, and those swearings keep us true in soul, as doth that orbid continent of the fire that severs day from night. 
Give me thy hand, and let me see thee in thy woman's weeds. The captain that did bring me first on shore hath my maid's garments. He, upon some action, is now endurance at Malvolio's suit, a gentleman and follower of my lady's. He shall enlarge him. Fetch Malvolio hither. And yet, alas, now I remember me. They say, poor gentleman, he's such a distract. A most extracting frenzy of my own from my remembrance clearly banished his. How does he, Sarah? Truly, madam, he holds beals above at the staves in, as well as a man in his case may do. Here, he has here writ a letter to you. I should have given it to you today morning, but as a madman's epistles are no gospels, so it skills not much when they are delivered. Open it and read it. Look then to be well edified when the fool delivers the madman. By the Lord, madman. How now? Art thou mad? No, madam, but I do read madness, and your ladyship will have it as it ought to be. You must allow, Vox. Prithee, read at thy right wits. So I do, Madonna, but to read his right wits is to read thus. Therefore, prepend, my princess, and give ear. Read it you, sir. Sorry. <clears throat> Boy the Lord, madam, you wrong me, and the world shall know it. Though you have put me into darkness and given your drunken cousin rule over me, yet I have the benefit of my senses as well as your ladyship. I have your own letter that induced me to the semblance I put upon, with the which I doubt not but to do yourself much right for you much same. Think of me as you please. I leave my duty a little unthought of and speak out of injury. The madly used Malvolio. Did he write this? Aye, madam. This savors not much of distraction. See him delivered, Fabian. Bring him hither. My lord, so please you. These things for the thought on. To think me as well a sister as a wife. One day shall crown the alliance on it, so please you here at my house and at my proper cost. Madam, I am most apt to embrace your offer. Your master quits you, and for your service done him, so much against the metal of your sex, so far beneath your soft and tender breeding. And since you called me master for so long, here is my hand. You shall, from this time, be your master's mistress. A sister, you are she. Is this the madman? Aye, my lord, this same. How now, Malvolio? Madam, you have done me wrong. Notorious wrong. Have I, Malvolio? No. <sighs> Lady, you have. Pray you, peruse that letter. You must not now deny it is your hand. Write from it if you can, in hand or phrase, or say tis not your seal, not your invention. You can say none of this. Well, grant it then, and tell me, in the modesty of honor, why you have given me such clear lights of favor, bade me come smiling and cross gartered to you, to put on yellow stockings, and to frown upon Sir Toby and the lighter people, and acting this in an obedient hope, why you have said imprisoned, kept in a dark house, visited by the priest, and made the most notorious geck and gall that ever had been played on Tommy! Why? Alas, Malvolio, this is not my writing, though I confess much like the character, but out of question tis Mariah's hand. Now I do bethink me, it was she first, thou, me, thou told me thou was mad, then camest in smiling, and in such forms, which here were presupposed upon thee in the letter. Prithee, be content, this practice hath most shrewdly passed upon thee, but when we know the grounds and authors of it, thou shalt be both plaintiff and judge of thine own cause. Uh, good madam, uh, hear me speak. 
And let no quarrel, no brawl to come, taint the condition of this present hour, which I have wondered at. I hope it shall not most freely. I confess, myself and Toby set this device against Malvolio here. <laughs> Upon some stubborn and uncourteous parts, we had conceived it against him. Maria writ the letter of Sir Toby's great importance and recompense whereof he hath married her. How, with a sportful malice, it was followed, may rather pluck on laughter than revenge, if that the injuries be justly weighted, that hath on both sides passed. Alas, poor fool, how they have baffled you. Why, some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrown upon them. I was one, sir, in this interlude, one Sir Topaz, sir, but that's all one. By the Lord, fool, I am not mad. But do you remember, madam, why laugh you at such a barren rascal, and you not smile, he's gagged, and thus the whirling of time brings in his revenges. He hath been most notoriously abused. Pursue him and entreat him to a peace. He hath not told us of the captain yet. When that is known and golden time convince, a solemn combination shall be made of our dear souls. Meantime, sweet sister, we will not part from hence. Cesario, come, for so you shall be while you are a man. But when in other habits you are seen, Orsino's mistress and his fancy's queen. When that I was a little tiny boy, with ho hey, with hey ho, the wind and the rain, a foolish thing was but a toy, for the rain it raineth every day. But when I came to man's estate, with hey ho, the wind and the rain, gainst knaves and thieves men shut their gate, for the rain it raineth every day. But when I came, alas, to wive, with hey-ho, the wind and the rain, by swaggering could I never thrive, for the rain it raineth every day. But when I came unto my beds, with hey-ho, the wind and the rain, with toss pots still had drunken heads, for the rain it raineth every day. A great while ago the world began, with hey-ho, the wind and the rain, but that's all one, our play is done and will strive to please you every day. All right, company. Oh my goodness. Y'all are the best. That Did everybody so back on screen? Fun. I know we, we had a couple of videos off and on. It looks like we've got everybody back on screen. One really big virtual round of applause for this amazing cast. I, I can't believe you guys have pulled this off like you have tonight. It has been our nothing less than one of the greatest pleasures to have put this on with you guys. Oh, my goodness. Y'all did be, us proud. Made us so proud. Oh, all the voices coming out of there. Oh, everyone tonight nailed it, gotta say. Thank you so much to all the viewers. Y'all are awesome. Yeah, yes. yeah you guys yes. have been amazing. The chat so much... has been a blast. <laughs> the yeah. chat's yeah. making me yeah. laugh just as much uh, half the time. Oh my goodness. Encore. Okay, so um, <laughs> so everyone get out your D20s and we'll re-roll for uh, <laughs> what play now? What play now? <laughs> or you can go to D&D Beyond and use their virtual dice. Oh. Wow. Hey, shameless plug, shameless plug. <laughs> I'm sponsored by. <laughs> Didn't we get one from Beetle and Grimm's, Katie? There we go. I will. I, I can pray. Uh, hold on. <laughs> let, me, let, me take a, let me take a sip from my D4 pint glass real fast before we go on with this. <laughs> yes! <Hey>. yes! <laughs> Please continue oh, how's that to. How's uh, plug? I love it. Please continue to put my logo that I designed for those guys everywhere and anywhere. I love seeing that thing pop up. I did not so realize wild. you did the logo. That wow. is a great cool. logo. That is so Amazing. cool. It's, it's the weirdest thing to see it pop up in uh, the unlikeliest places. So 
It says only if the bard comes back. Or the beard comes back. I'm sorry, I misread that. <laughs> only beard. if the beard comes back. The beard so, comes back. <laughs> apparently, Goblin, even though we cast completely randomly, I guess even if you end up playing a female in the future, you will need to be the bearded lady at least. <laughs> I, 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 you know, I hear and I obey. <laughs> it was so good. And the, and the, and the Connery that just, you know, flew oh, out of you. Lane accent. Was, I had practiced reading so much in this voice. I couldn't <laughs> shake it. <That's> it. <laughs> and, and so it just got me. Oh. Um, okay, so what was the count? What was the count of how many weddings we had here? Because Shakespeare plays always have to end with the weddings. We had three weddings, right? Three. There's three weddings. Three, three weddings. Total. In total. Well, it. It, there's 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 two that happen off stage. Yeah. And then one that is going to happen. Yeah, because yeah. we got we got Sir Toby hitched. Yes, Sir Toby got hitched, and Olivia and Sebastian got hitched. Nice. Forever alone. But <laughs> Orsino and Viola are also going to get hitched. Sir Toby will meet his drunken wench, I'm sure. Or Sir, oh, Sir Andrew, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, there will eventually be someone who wants some Andy Beard action. So I, it'll I honestly, I picture him just uh, trailing after Toby and Mariah and being like, can I come too? <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, what are we doing tonight? And they're like, oh my God, <laughs> Andrew. Forever the third wheel. Uh, exactly. Uh, Andrew, hey Goblin. Yes. Just so you know, D and D Jordan Lee just uh, gifted a sub for the beard and all of your amazing work. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, thank, thank you, D and D Jordan. Ever so much. Uh, like, that I, might, I know that, that being like the thing. last single person amongst all my friends, it's like, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, <laughs> Sir Toby. Yep. Yeah. Just go out and get some more beer and you won't worry about it anymore. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. So the sub was for all of us, but um the beard was specifically mentioned, so I wanted to give Goblin that 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 shout out. Thank we you. will thank you. Let it be known that we will do crazy costume midstream changes for subs. We're not be we're not above it. Oh yeah, no, I'm I have no shame. Just you know. <laughs> Mid midstream accent changes, <laughs> facial hair growth. I'm I'm here for it. You guys are the <laughs> absolute best right That's now. That's some fast acting tea, Goblin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you need to get that stuff on the market now because I know folks want that. <laughs> they want those results. It just goes so we need well that with out there. Do I'm. I'm tickled that it came out so good. Like I'm looking at the stream right now, going, "Oh, hey, that's it's pretty." Like, epic. I figured out I mean, a way you, to do you, this. You have officially animals. been turned into a meme. So yeah, oh, there, there has oh, been a screenshot. Lord, what? Yes, there's, a, oh, yeah. there's been a screenshot taken. Ah, oh, shit! <laughs> <laughs> We're never gonna let you live it down. Now it will be <laughs> your greatest legacy. It just it keeps making me think of the the dwarves from Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Right. Oh wait, someone actually said. <laughs> yeah. Uh, credit to... credit to uh, Dustin for uh, snapping the beard shot there. Yeah. Why uh, am I not <laughs> surprised? Uh, he, he should have been the one you thought of first. Goblin, if you go into our Discord chat, you will see it. it's there. Oh it's, yeah. It's, it's awesome. So it's getting spread around already. Getting some action. Oh no. Oh goodness gracious. So this show, guys, right? Yes, uh, such a fun got, show. It's got it all. It's got a little <laughs> bit of everything. I even love how you, um, the bros run after, um, they run after uh, Viola, you know, thinking she's the Cesario character and they're just gonna go beat the crap out of him. And all of a sudden her monk lookalike uh, brother shows up who's got like all the skills. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love yeah. that he had bros. Like, he's the king of comedies. I, I love Shakespeare's twists. Oh, yeah. You know, he just, he made, that was his weapon, was his mockery. So, you know, if he yeah. didn't like you, if he didn't agree with you, you were going to end up in a show, and you were going to look stupid. But see, this is what was weird to me about the inclusion of Fabian was this weird kind of like, he's part of the bros, but not really. Like, when things got weird, he was like, I, I don't know, man. Those guys are just, Jeez. like, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're jerks. I don't know. He's bro adjacent. Fabian's a great pair of water. Fabian, just drank out together every once in a while. Fabian took yeah. one look at what was happening to Malvolio and was like, 
Oh, hell no. That's cruel. I'm oh, out. Hey, I'm <laughs> here for a good time, guys, but jeez. Dude, <laughs> that's easy. so mean. This is I too need much. you down here. I'm you out. guys are up here. Yeah. Yeah, he, he's, the, he's the getaway driver that hears sirens and just peels off, leaves everybody behind. <laughs> I didn't sign up for sirens. Nope. And I, I, out. <laughs> I, I have to give a shout out to. Oh, oh she goes. This is this anticipation. <laughs> Will we ever find out? <laughs> who is the shout out, out to? Who Goblin's going to oh, shout out to? Tune in next week. Same bat time. Same bat channel. Find There's out man. next time on Dragon Ball. Okay. <laughs> we missed everything you said. We, we did. Dude, what was the shout out? Oh, yeah, the shout out yeah. was was to our Olivia, who did such a beautiful job yes. portraying this so so earnestly and beautifully, while the rest of us are like, "Bro, let's get him!" <laughs> Trying to hold it, it together. Was <laughs> it was so amazing. Hard. Well, I mean, I'm pretty sure that's like... the part. Olivia is the straight, you know, yeah. <laughs> uh, figure in the whole show, while everyone else is just bananas. Yes. I mean, she's yeah. got her own banana. She's like, I've known this man for 72 hours and I'm going to marry him. Yep. That's, yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> she's coming down um, off that she's coming down off that weird like rush of hormones that she got for this little boy that was coming back and forth like she comes down off of that and like but I'm still kind of hot about it. Uh, She's going full on Juliet up in yeah, the Yeah, that's sort of what the Shakespeare heroine does, though. Yeah. She's yeah. That yeah. Ingenue, the Shakespeare ingenue, she's like, oh, a boy. Oh. And then they get married. And yeah. It's, yeah. He's, he's like, like, man, fuck this kid. He's annoying. Wait, yeah. actually, he's kind of cute. Wait, no, actually, I'm hot for him. For <laughs> all Gordon says, that's a Disney movie. You can't marry a man you just met. This, this is true. <laughs> Um, so Finn, I think yeah. now might be a good time for us to plug some of our cast members. What do you think? I think that's a great idea. Uh, many of our cast members are involved in other projects online and have other online presences. And so we just want to make sure we give them a chance to plug their other ventures. Uh, so when I, um, I'm just going to go through the list that we made earlier, let everyone know where they can find you. Miss Ellie. I am Ellie. You can find me on Twitter at Ellie underscore A underscore Collins, or you can find me every Tuesday here on Twitch uh, doing ATL by Night, a Vampire the Masquerade actual play show. Our new season starts September 7th. Very, very nice. Looking forward to it. Uh, Melodic. Hi, um, I'm Melodic Blue. You can find me on Twitter at Melodic Blue, um, and you can also find me here on Twitch um, usually almost every day. Um, I'm a variety streamer. Monday, Wednesday, Friday is currently Sailor Moon and Another Story with mediocre attempts at voice acting. Uh, and then I do Twitch things on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Very nice, very nice. And uh, before I move on, I will point to the chat that um, our mods have put uh, Twitter handles in the chat for everyone. Um, then we have Trav. Uh, you can catch me at TW Farl on Twitter. You can also catch me on the Shadowrun actual play podcast, Pink Mohawk Edition. Occasionally, you can even catch me on either Dice Fiends or on uh, Radio Free Detroit. Love it. Uh, Miss Lindsay. Hi. Um, you can find me at Lindsay Zana, just my name, just all one word, uh, across Twitter and Instagram. Uh, and you can hear me on several podcasts, um, two that I like to shout out. One is called Arden, which is a very Shakespearean-inspired in fake true crime podcast. And the other is a Shadowrun actual play kind of improvised audio drama called Crit Squad. So you can find both of those on Twitter. Very nice. Uh, Jeff. Okay. Sorry, my heart is exploding hearing all these Shadowrun mentions it's my what i first started with any rate uh you can find me in pretty much any social media as jeffrey n baker um here on twitch i'll do it's, it's really consistent right now but basically i do live um voice acting and we kind of go through scripts you can just drop in and talk with me about the what i'm working on and ask questions and we just kind of go through the process of script analysis and all that kind of fun stuff, both commercial and animation. Um, and I also am a voice actor. Hire me. <laughs> and you have all borne witness to his amazing voice yeah. acting chops tonight. 
Yeah. yeah. So you can go to my website, jeffreyandbaker.com, and uh, we can work together, or I can write you uh, a demo script, actually. I'm doing that as well. So sorry. That's a lot of things. No, it's great. No, it's great to be involved in a lot of things. And I hope everyone finds you at all those things. Yeah. And our wonderful bearded woman, Miss Goblin Katie. Hello, I'm Goblin Katie. You can find me on all social medias at Goblin Katie. Um, you can also catch me on Sundays at 7 p.m. on twitch.tv slash rockpunchatl for the D4 stream. We play 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. Um, Dustin and Devin are our DMs. We have dual DMs. They run simultaneously, and it is absolutely amazing. You can also catch me on the Stellar Arcanum podcast, which is available on all major streaming services. That's a traditional D&D group that found themselves thrust into outer space on a spaceship, and they have no clue about technology. It's a lot of fun. And this Tuesday, you can catch me at 7 p.m. here on Chaotic Tiefling ATL as I take part in the trivia challenge. I'm challenging you to BBC Sherlock Thu. What you got? I'm going to be there. I'll be there. It'll Trying be fun. You. You, you've got to be the first guest to win because you know guests just don't win on this show. Did, I thought Katie won. Did she not win? Other Katie, not me. I'm not talking in Wait, I did miss that episode. <laughs> did, did other Katie win? Can I get confirmation on this? Babs? No, no. Still, still no winners what? from the guests on trivia. Well, no pressure. Finn lost his. Yes, Finn lost his. But I came in second. That might be the highest rank a guest has gotten. Wow. Waiting for All confirmation? Right. Not going to get it? Okay, well, fine. Now the pressure is on. First, so I would, I would think second is the highest you can get. Yep. Okay. Yep. Strike says no guest has won trivia. Nope. Well, guys, we could keep going on and on and on tonight about how much we want to give it up and shout out for each and every one of these wonderful cast members. But whew, we just uh, are so happy that you've joined us tonight. Uh, thank you for being a part of the very first episode of What Streams May Come as we brought you Twelfth Night. Uh, please tell other people about this show, uh, that it's happening every other week right here on Chaotic Tiefling ATL. And for our next episode, we will be reading The Merry Wives of Windsor at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on August 22nd. If you were watching tonight and thought that you were having a lot of fun, congratulations, you're correct. If you'd like to join in, please follow Chaotic Tiefling Productions on Twitter for information on how to be to cast. And please, as always, toss a sub to your Twitchers and show some love to our dear friend, Babs the Bat, the off-screen oracle, without whom none of this would have been possible. Uh, her hard work is what brought our shenanigans straight to you. Uh, she is our wonderful friend and producer, and we can't be more thankful to her than giving us the shot on her channel. If you would like to connect with either of us hosts, you can give us a follow on Twitter at Bloodhaven Bard or at Jessica Skell. Until the next one, be good to yourself and be good to each other. We will all get through this and back under the stage lights once more. Give us your hands if we be friends. We love you. We'll miss you. Till it's showtime again. <laughs>